All right, what's up everybody? Mike O'Geeky here. 2023, we're doing it. New format, more guests, more fun, more knowledge, more information, more, 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 because that's what we do in America. Anyway, uh, you know, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, I fell down the mycological rabbit hole and uh, I'm kind of liking it down here, guys. I've met a lot of amazing people. A lot of people, you know, in this community are looking for some salvation, some healing, and uh, definitely some friendship. And uh, this first year, I have been super busy. I have grown literally hundreds of pounds of all kinds of mushrooms. Uh, I started a small myco business, and now I host this podcast. And I am... I am enjoying it. I'm having a good time. Uh, the feedback is really positive. Um, I am really looking forward to what uh, the new year is going to bring. Uh, anyway, so it's grown by leaps and bounds in a very short period of time. It's kind of becoming a full-time job. I decided to set up a membership business on Patreon in order to continue to bring you better and better podcasts, better guests, more content that you guys have been requesting. Um, uh, link is in the description. Um, there's three tiers right now. By joining the Geeky Gang, you would be helping me ensure weekly quality content, help make this dream of mine a reality. Um, the, the dream is really just to keep doing this, um, to bring more people together, more positivity, more unity, you know, united we stand, divided we fall, sharing of more ideas. Um, uh, all the stuff that, that so far seems to be well recepted by people in the community. Uh, I promise you that as the support grows from the Patreon, I will continue to grow and expand the channel. All the money will go into the channel uh, to, you, you know, better production, better editing, more content, better guests, uh, you know, maybe some fancy schmoozy guests that I got to pay to bring on, stuff like that. Um, and at the end of the day, the whole point will be that every week you guys can tune in and learn something and, and evolve. And, and as you and I know, um, there's a lot of information out there. So it is a little challenging sometimes to, to feel like you're, you're bringing something new to the table. And so far, I, I think we're, we're doing that every episode, and, and I'm pretty proud of it. So anyway, if you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, uh, link is in the description. Uh, but now, 2023 new format. I'm super excited. Um, my boy Wumbo Maiko, he uh, contacted me not too long ago and said, I uh, think I need to come back on the podcast. Got something cool going on. I said, let's do it. Uh, let's do it in the new year. Let's let's ring in the new year. I, I got my first return guest. Um, if you guys tune in the first time, you know this guy's smart. He's young. He's driven. He's trying things. And uh, I think a lot of people in the community can, can relate to um, his goals and his eagerness. Um, he's definitely influential and inspirational for me. So uh, this first segment, this is kind of the grower spotlight. This is uh, what's up with uh, Wombo Maiko. And tonight we are going to be talking about magic mycelium. Yes, guys, we all grow magic mushrooms using the word magic. It's not that weird. And we're here to find out tonight exactly what Wombo means. He's got a link tree. It's just uh, link tree Wombo Maiko. And uh, I'm going to bring him on here. Without further ado, welcome back, Wumbo. How are you doing today? Good, man. Uh, I worked 12 hours in an ER, and let me tell you, everyone Oof. is fucking sick right now. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I've definitely I've gotten hit by the sickness uh, tr the last few weeks. Trying to be uh, the good host and not swear these days. Got the tip from PGT that YouTube does not like the swearing, so... I'm going to try. I'm going to put 25 cents in the tip jar every time I say a naughty word. So anyway. Yeah, it's All at right. least best to keep it out of the first few minutes. Yeah, I'm trying. I, I think I failed. That was like 440. <laughs> oh, well. We'll get there. As, uh, I'll get used to it. It's okay. Yeah. I, I cuss like a sailor. What can I say? <laughs> okay, man. So magic mycelium. Um, 
I want to hear about it. You you kind of gave me gave me a taste. Um, yeah. I think it's a, a novel concept, and uh, let's go. <laughs> so, unfortunately, I was planning on having a th- sort of more thorough set of uh, tests done on all of my cilial samples that I took. Okay. Um, but for right now, um, and I also do not have the printout of the newest tests that I have. And you're talking about HPLC tests, right? But yes, so these yeah, okay. these tests I've run through two labs. One, first one was Evergreen Thumbs Lab. Second was the Hyphae Labs. Um, oh. And uh, I'm just trying to get an idea for... Um, the specific species that I'm looking at. Uh, the sample that was given to me was labeled Slospi Uh and I, I've sort of come to find out that, uh, uh, you know, other people have told me that uh, it, this, the sequences of this sort of line up more with a subtropicalis than they would with a Hookshigenii. So it's sort okay. of more closely related to Slospi subtropicalis. Okay. Um, but this species, uh, initially, I grew it uh, on just whole oats, um, and and I also tried millet as well. Uh, and I would just let it incubate, fully colonize, incubate for about two months. Okay. Um, after that, touching it would immediately start making it bruise very deep blue. Um, and so okay. I figured, uh, why not try uh, breaking it up, dehydrating it, um, and having that tested. So... I have here, I think, um, I think I uploaded them, but I can't really see them. Um, one that says copy of report. Do PDFs work? Yeah, PDFs work. Oh, we lost them. So I think Wumbo's trying to upload something right now. See, this is what happens, guys. When you watch your TV shows, when we're just sitting back and we're Netflixing and we're chilling, it's just, you know, it's like that line in the Nirvana song, here we are now, entertain us. It's a lot of behind the scenes. And for the Myco Geeky podcast in 2023, some of that behind the scenes is happening live. All right, I think we got him back here. All right. So sorry about that. That's I, okay. It booted me. Um so I tried to upload them, but uh, let me know if you can see them anywhere. There's some PDFs that should say, like, a uh, copy of report. If not, not I can. All right. Well, then, let me just... Um, I'm looking I can do it via screen share. There you go. Um, yep, so I'm not seeing it. It usually pops up if it's, if it's there. All right. Yes, so this is it, and I will share screen. Also, you um, said, um, so the, you had this, how do you say that? Hoochigenii? Yeah, Hoochigenii, yeah, so. Hoochigenii, okay. Yeah. Uh,. It's, oh, uh, I have it up, but it's not letting me switch to it. Oh, I got it. I got it. Here we go. Yeah, cool. So, now. so this go. is, uh, sort of the first report that I was given. Um, it has the Slosby Hookshigenii mycelium on oats, um, and the results are, very low now, mind you, compared sure. to say like dried fruiting bodies of Cubensis, but um, we're talking about very dense uh, oats and uh, mycelium, which is mm-hmm. the filler. So it, it shows that there is uh, notable potency here. It's there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, about ten grams, uh, which is a tablespoon to two tablespoons, somewhere around there, of mm-hmm. the dried grains is about equal to. Uh, like one gram, uh, what you would expect of a gram dried potency from like a wild cubensis. I mean, so um, you're kind of talking about so- psilocybin cereal, dude. Yeah. It's like just um, pour a little milk on it and we're good. <laughs> so uh, my first uh, concern with the grains and the consumption of the grains was 
Uh, a lot of grains are sprayed heavily with pesticides. Okay. You know, they could potentially have fungicides, other things like that. So um, I feel like uh, if we are to be just consuming these grains, you know, breaking them down, consuming them, it's good to also have these secondary uh, columns that I have for testing here. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry. I'll pull them back. There we go. So this is heavy metals, cadmium, lead, arsenic, and mercury. Um, these are the head, heavy metals we're looking at here. I mean, that definitely makes my catfish taste better, I can tell you that. <laughs> yes. Mm, mercury's um, got such a nice aftertaste. You will notice there's a little bit of arsenic in here, um, but I have looked at the, uh, what do you call it? It's okay. Regulations. Any toxicologist, <laughs> you know, the, it, the, the right, everything's toxic in the right dose and everything's right. consumable. You'll find right you'll dose. find more arsenic in uh, apple seeds. Oh yeah. Um, for sure. But uh yeah, and then pesticide panel. Um, there are no pesticides detected. Nice. Um, so that is a hopeful result for okay. the cultivation of this on a home scale. Um, so so the the point being I get I get psilocybin and mm -hmm. I don't have to grow the mushrooms now. You don't have I'm, to grow the mushrooms. You don't have to do any of the uh, more intensive harvesting processes. Right. Now you also uh, can control the environment quite a lot easier because it's just right. a single sterile bag. I like it. It's exciting, um, especially because and this is now a lot of us listening to the podcast. We like growing mushrooms. We mm. like the challenges and all that stuff. Yes. But every once in a while, um, it's great for us to realize that not everybody wants to own an FFU. That yep. That everybody actually wants a massive hobby to become obsessed with. They need the mm -hmm. medicine. You know, right. this is literally why drugstores exist. So, um, yeah, this is great. This is, I mean, uh, this radical simplification of the process that can ultimately lead to um, a, a way of producing your own psilocybin. Now, it... So if I don't want to eat the grain, though, I mm. should be able to extract it, right? Or do some simple so, process. And that's where we started to run into a little bit of issues. Um, okay. Yeah, I inquired with people who are extractors on um, uh, could we extract the mycelium uh, on the grains and get sort of a more right. uh, easily usable product. Um, not necessarily product, but just uh, easily usable you know, um, extract. Correct. Um, and, uh, from, from what I understand, you're basically going to be able to concentrate it a little bit, but you're mostly going to be pull pulling a lot of, um, sugars and other, other things from wow. the, uh, grains out. You're going to make almost like a malt extract that has a little bit of psilocybin in it. Um, and so what we come to is trying Ooh. to create um just mycelium so this is okay. a this is a uh i believe 2.8 liter uh firm back firm buck culture flask um and inside it is the mycelium of the same species that has been rotating like this mm -hmm. 24 hours a day uh it forms these very little balls that are sort of like boba in a sense um, oh, don't, don't get me too excited. I love Boba. <laughs> and so now these are what, these are the tests that I've been focused on is, um, trying to sort of figure out, uh, metabolism, trying to figure out time scale, trying right. to figure out things like that to get, um, the right test results from these, trying to test them fresh, dehydrated. Uh, hopefully I can get some freeze dried tests soon. Um, and so... From the results, the dehydrated my mycelium that I sent in was not not higher than the than the grains. So okay. I would say it's probably too sensitive to heat to be something that you would want to like dehydrate them, store them, something right. like this. The thing that I've found is great is to just pour this whole thing over a coffee filter, um, and. Uh, as you, you know, and I put the like coffee filter in a funnel and a big jug and just drain off all of the liquid culture and wash it with, uh, distilled water and just keep pouring distilled water over it okay. until it sort of runs clean. Um, these, this clean mycelium, these, these, 
uh, pure pearls, you can just put them into sterile um, distilled water in tubes and whatever you want, right. close it up, and those will store for a very long time um, and will be sanitary and um, there will be no growth. you can sugarcoat them and put the letter M on them. And now yeah. you've got the kind of M&Ms I'm trying to eat. Yeah. Exactly. That's um, kind of cool. Yeah, I would, I would, I see a lot of uses for it um, as far as just being able to mass produce um, some sort of, and this is sort of far off in the future in my mind, sure. is if, if some company has a desire to use, to, to, to derive psilocybin for standards testing or something like mm -hmm. this, right? Um, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll, they'll modify like an E. coli in order to produce right. yeah. psilocybin that they can then... Um, and you know, maybe this is a way that, um, could make a very easily extractable standard, or maybe it could just be, um, a, an easy, ac easily accessible way of making your own psilocybin without much of the well, science to it. I'll tell you what is going on in my head is I wonder, so, you know, we talked to guys like George and Jordan Jacobs and, uh, a lot of these HPLC guys, and they will all concur that in one tub you can have, you know, sometimes up to a threefold variability in potency, fruit to fruit, and even, yes. you know, a, a, a two, twofold variability within the, the Basidio carp itself. Yes. Um, so you always have this issue, issue of you have to homogenize everything to get some sort of baseline. Um, right. It has me curious. I wonder if there's a more rock steady potency level production I yeah maybe the production is more even keel yeah and that's something only i would love to look is, into yeah so that's where i'm going Ooh, th this is interesting these little nugs you know the because we like nugs i know yeah, you guys I, out there you like nugs absolutely i do want to point out um this is not the only species that's capable of doing this um i don't believe very many i, I don't believe cubensis mushrooms that I know of will do this. Um, but I know that um, some people have done it with Slosby ovidesia da da. I can't pronounce that the one. Ovids. <laughs> Ovioids. Yeah. yeah. Um, those are uh, potentially capable of doing the same thing, as well as I've heard um, Slosby pseudo azotacorum uh, oh, can do okay. this. So if anybody wants to start playing around with this, um, those are what you look into. And um, yeah, you know, I do recommend people be safe and um, don't consume anything that, you know, could be potentially harmful to right. you uh, from a health standards standpoint. You don't want to be consuming large amounts of anaerobic bacteria or things like that that you don't, I uh, don't. know what they are. <laughs> yes. um, now aerobic bacteria, oh, I'll just... Yeah, uh, I'll yeah. That out, like, off an ice cream I drink a lot of kombucha care. and stuff. <laughs> no, but anaerobic, no, no bueno. Sure. Um, so yeah, it's it's. Uh, I think it's it's an awesome method. Um, and yeah, I, I was really hoping to bring more data here, but yeah. Well, it's science, right? This is <laughs> this is. It's like building a house. You can have a timeline, but you're never gonna. You're pretty much never gonna hit it. There's right. There's always hiccups and stuff that happens. Um, but it's still exciting, and even more than that, it's cool that you're just thinking very outside the box. This is, you know, most of us are just, well, just keep growing mushrooms, which is yes. great. I'm going to keep growing mushrooms. I know you're going to keep growing mushrooms. But <laughs> it's cool to be thinking out of the box. And, um, man, I think I'm most excited if you had a way of really making the yield and potency consistent. I think yes. that would be pretty cool. Yeah, and that will that will come here? down to repeated uh, testing. So what we got right here is um, this is a graphic that I've been <coughs> Oh god. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Choking on a <coughs> bubble of air. <laughs> you consumed <coughs> one of your um, mycelial balls. <coughs> yeah. Um, so this chart here uh, it sort of just charts, uh, on a, um, the path, uh, life cycle of a, a fungi, um, okay. mushroom forming fungi, you know, uh, uh, some sort of basidiomycetes, whatever you want to, uh, call it, will go from a monocarion, uh, sort of a single spore 
<coughs> germinates uh, with half of the uh, chromosomal DNA needed to uh, finish its life cycle. And then, um, so it can take two paths, uh, meeting another monocarion, mating, creating a dicarion. <coughs> God, forgive me. <laughs> um, or uh, coming in contact with an already uh, formed dicarion and then uh, that dicarion would then donate a nuclei to the monocarion uh, in which it would complete the um, DNA set needed to replicate and would go on. Um, and now what happens in the next stage is that if your, if your mycelium is not coming in contact with, say, um, a, a, an environmental scenario um, in which it, it deems uh, survival, uh, f uh, you know, dropping its spores fit for survival, um, maybe it comes in contact with more other dicarions and decides, right. uh, I don't know if decides is the right word, but um, sort of uh, conditions dictate that uh, it, it's more advantageous for it to mate with this other dicarion. Um, in this instance, uh, these dicarions can uh, swap nuclei between the two, sure. um, creating sort of a, a novel substrate between them, um, and it forms a new dicarion. Um, what this, uh, th and then from there you have the karyogamy and meiosis stage where the nuclei fuse, um, they split in, apart. At this, yeah, in the fruit at this point. Right, in the in fruit, the after the fruit have grown. In the basidiocarp, um, and 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 you know between this stage and uh, spore dispersal, there are mutations that occur mm -hmm. um, in the um, nuclei population of the uh, organism. I guess is how how you could describe it. Um, and so what they're doing here in this in this paper is sort of charting um, three points on this uh, triangle here. Uh, on mutation step, and one, uh, say the top point of the triangle is um, mating fitness, the ability for a uh, dicarion to um, receiver exchange um, nuclei, um, receiver donate nuclei to other dicarions uh, or monocarions. Um, and then in the bottom left, sort of this plane would be something like uh, vegetative fitness, um, the uh, would be these nuclei would be maximizing in this area for the ability for hyphae to um, spread to neighboring areas. Um, and then spore fitness is usually the bottom to the right here. And spore fitness is like how many viable spores is it creating in the gills? How many spores is it creating in the gills? Um, how, how easily are those spores going to be able to uh, mate in a diploid scenario with the monocarions. Um, All right, and you said this is from a paper. Yes, uh, this is very long-winded. I'm sorry. Send, uh, send, no, send, I'm just saying send me, a, send me the link so I can add it to the description too so that, you know, people are looking at this chart and going, ooh, I like get this. The I want to learn more. You uh, don't have to do it now, but, but yeah, just so that it's there uh, for posterity. All right. Um... Yes, I'm streaming this too. So you can probably pull this up here. Modeling the consequences of the dicaryotic life cycle of mushroom forming fungi on the on genomic conflict. Um, and Ooh, so yeah, genomic it's genomic conflict. I like it yes. already. Yes, and so it's going to sort of show you um, the life cycle of a mushroom, the different mating paths that, that it can take. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to give you some of these simulations here which sort of plot the population of nuclei within the organism over generations. Okay. Um, and so, you know, the first animation is, is the diploid um, scenario here. Uh, let me see if I can... Um, can you see the other paper, that, the paper that I'm looking at? Um, no, I think I just have that one. Let's see. Ah, I see. So then I can do present, share screen, uh, Chrome tab, modeling consequences. There we go. So here All you right, go. Here we go. And um, so here's this, and I'll be real quick with this. Okay. Um, 
these animations will show you where the nuclei are trending towards um, over the generations of the fungi, over 100 generations. Okay. So the monocarion, monocarion mating will trend towards spore fitness. Oh, this is interesting. Okay. The standard dicarion scenario is a monocarion mating with a dicarion. Um, and so the nuclei population will sort of uh, trend towards uh, grouping around mating fitness, mm -hmm. um, but sometimes will uh, go a little bit more towards spore fitness, uh, depending on whether the, uh, what do you call it, whether the genes uh, that code for these things are, or sorry, whether it's, <laughs> I'm sort of <laughs> flash forgetting <laughs> everything for a second. Um, whether the organism is polygenic or, or, I don't know how to phrase this, but whether it's polygenic or monogenic. So, uh, whether it is relying on multiple genes or a single right. gene. Um, which I imagine, especially out in nature, depending how a myceliated patch comes to exist, you mm -hmm. might have a fairly pure genetic, like a single dicarion, or, or you might have a whole bunch of dicarions. Yeah, I mean, I guess in a scenario where, know. yeah, I guess in a scenario where the dicarion is uh, uh, particularly fit uh, over the others, it, it may uh, be the only one able to persist. Uh, so, so the open dicarion sim simulation is sort of where things, you start to be able to make a little bit of conclusions here from the data. And that is to show you that very quickly, um, through five to ten generations, almost all of these nuclei are grouping around the mating fitness, um, which means that they're they're going away from spore fitness uh, at the expense of these two, and are going to be almost unable to mate uh, oh, without okay. um, die 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 mating basically. Right. Um, That's cool. And then yeah, so I will link that because yeah, that's very interesting um i'm hoping in the the coming year we're gonna talk more on a more sophisticated level about um breeding and and how to get our mushrooms to breed certain ways and so this looks like a great paper um so i will add it for sure thank you thank you yeah uh i'm working on a little summary of this and trying to break everything down on my patreon uh, oh perfect uh, yeah so guys it, if you don't know um, I'm late to the game on Patreon. Wumbo's been there for a while, um, <laughs> and he's pulling up content. Uh, also, our next guest has Patreon, so, um, you know, it, it's just a great place where amidst, um, amidst a lot of, you know, who's going to get banned from Instagram this week, right? Or <laughs> it, it's just yeah. a more stable platform. And it's a way to support people that, that you believe in and you like seeing what they're doing and you want to see them keep doing what they're doing. Um, like I said, you know, uh, there, it's a lot of work. Well, all, all the people that are doing things that are exciting and interesting, um, it's not accidentally happening. It's happening <laughs> by, by putting in a lot of work. So, um, Wumbo, I thank you for... Uh, for coming on and talking about that. We're obviously, as you figure more things out and uh, move towards uh, some more conclusions, we'll have you back. And um, that's a great thing about doing the segments now is, uh, you know, we have a science segment. So if you're like, man, I, I figured something out on here and I just want to pop in for five or 10 minutes and talk about it, we can easily do that now. So uh, awesome. that's great. And then same with the paper. You know, if you get to where you're like, you know what, I spent more time with this paper and then I try to implement some some breeding projects, and I actually think I see some of the the lessons from this paper playing out a little bit in what I'm doing. And we can come on and talk about that, and and that goes for everybody watching because a lot of the people that watch this podcast are also people who are uh, doing things that are newsworthy and noteworthy in the Myco community. So you guys can feel free to pitch me, and definitely pitch me. Uh, I get people who just direct message me, hey, I want to be on your show. <laughs> Dude, come at me with what you want to talk about. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you very much for that. I, I will get the, the white paper link up in, in the description uh, at least by tomorrow. And uh, can't wait to see more of your uh, 
see, now I regret calling it magic mycelium. I think I would just call it uh, silo boba tea, but okay. <laughs> I like boba tea, man. There's, there's a marketing person out there somewhere who will yes. figure a name out. <laughs> oh, they will. All right, man. Well, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate you coming on as always and look forward to the next time. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. All right. Take care. You too. All right, guys. Segment one. Wumbo Myco, Silo Balls. I, there's my best marketing uh, uh, attempt, uh, spur of the moment. Silo Balls. I love them. We could just be like snacking right out right now on our little Silo Balls. I fucking want. Uh, I gotta watch that swearing. Want to do that? Okay, so. I have had a lot of people uh, since starting to do this say, hey, you know what you should do is, you know, everybody wants to like know the story behind uh, this variety and that cultigen and that strain and that this and that, you know, the, the story, where did it come from? And Dave Wombat is busy. He's usually answering that question on Facebook. I, I can't, I think maybe once a day, somebody says, well, I thought such and such was this and that. And then Dave will respond. No, actually here it's this. And then uh, a guy named Bill uh, came over to my house one. Anyway, so uh, inspired by that, uh, I threw around the idea, let's do a segment where we kind of go behind the scenes and try to figure out where some of these varieties came from, bring on the people who played a part in developing them and isolating them, breeding them, what have you. And uh, so I had figured out my first guest before I figured out uh, what to call it. And she uh, kindly came up with a brilliant uh, title that also dated the both of us a little bit. So tonight we are going to start uh, what I hope to be a very regular segment called Behind the Veil. If you guys are old like me, you used to watch VH1 and, uh, you know, behind the music, you'd kind of understand how hit songs came to be or how an album came to be or, you know, how some rock band from the 90s, uh, you know, tr had a tragic ending. Anyway, so Behind the Veil tonight, we are going to be talking with none other than the infamous Miss Mush SoCal. She's got a site, mmsc.company.site. Check her out. Without further ado, let's bring her on. All right, what's up, Miss Mush? What's up, how's it going? It's going well. I, I, uh, I'm definitely uh, a little envious these days. I don't know if you heard, but uh, over here in Ohio, it's been cold, and then now it's maybe not quite as cold, but it's still rainy and horrible. <laughs> and uh, I definitely miss Southern California. Um, no, we I miss you too. Little, I hear it's a little dicey out there right now. It's been going between on Christmas Day. It was 85 degrees here. Uh, I went out rock hunting in the desert. And then yeah. now it's it's raining right now. So okay, everyone's going to be sick, I'm sure. Well, at least you're getting your annual rain for, for the year. Yes, our annual two inches yeah. of rain. Dude, I remember... I. When I first moved out there, I moved to L.A., and uh, I think in the first week it rained one afternoon for about 45 minutes, and I swear to God, I did not see rain again for a year and a half. Yeah, that's what it sounds about right. Yeah. But, you know, is who, what is that old R&B group, Tony, Tony, Tony? They got that song, It Never Rains in Southern California. It's true. It's about it. Yeah, we're getting all of it right now. Yeah. But when it does rain, it landslides and mudslides. Of course, and, yes. and everyone slides off the road. It's great. Yeah, it's good times, yes. All right, well, so if you grow mushrooms uh, of the, the sort that a lot of us grow, and you're on Instagram, uh, unless you, I don't know, unless you're just not following the right people, everybody's probably heard of uh, the cultigen that put you on the map. And that Correct. was briefly yeah. brought up uh, on the uh, Female Mycology podcast. Uh, that is Iceberg. Right. Um, I would say, so again, I've been doing this for a little over a year. I'd say probably ODPE, Hillbilly, and Iceberg are kind of like the cool kid varieties that, that everybody talks about. Um, well, you know, the every... apple doesn't fall far from the tree. There you go. Yes. <laughs> There you go. Miss, maybe Miss Iceberg is, is the new name. I mean, anyway, it's all right if you're going to call me an ice queen. We can deal with that. We, we can. 
Mm-hmm. All right, so iceberg. We're we're going to talk. talk about iceberg. Um, I was really excited to have you be the first behind the veil because if I remember correctly, you said that you had your first albino fruit that ultimately led to iceberg not too long after getting into growing for, for the first No, time, it was right? within within six months, I think, of beginning to cultivate. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. All right. So do you want me to pull up that uh, slide? Yeah, chart? definitely. All right, let, let's pull this up. Let me get rid of the overlay here. All right. Iceberg Origins. Look at that. It's my babies. Looks good already. <laughs> so... When I first started, when I was originally began cultivating, I was doing PF Tech. Um, So everybody starts somewhere, right? Um, So I think a lot of people look at folks and say, oh, you you know, you're so good. And they don't stop to think that like we started in the exact same place they did. Um, So it helps. It's worth reminding people that, you know, humble beginnings are everywhere. And my story is no different there. Um, But this was the original culture um, before I had isolated out the albino. Okay. So this is the Thai leap of yai. Correct. Yes. All right. Let me keep going here. Okay. Now, that was a multi-spore, which in in retrospect, I I realize now how lucky I was to be so successful putting spores right into a BRF cake. Um, But this is how they presented. um, And the one circled is actually the fruit that all of your guys' iceberg that you've grown. This is this is mama right here. This fruit. That's the OG. Yes. Nice. Now, so the first time I saw this picture, I thought to myself, there's a big lesson for me because I had a tub of, uh, man, I can't even think what it was. Maybe a, a Melmac or something like that. And I had an albino pop out and I clone cultured it. And thought, oh, I'm going to work this. And then I just didn't. And then I don't just don't know where it went. I guess I just didn't. And believe me, I've had, you know, I've had things go the way of the dinosaurs where you just lose them. And I'm not above that. That's happened to me before plenty of times. But this is the one. This one made it. This one made it. This is great. You have a photo of it. This is the, I was just talking to Ed about uh, how I don't take a picture, uh, don't take pictures of a lot of my stuff. And he's like, yeah, we just gotta, you know, you gotta. I'm a mother. That's what I do is we take pictures of everything. Um, These are some of the very early when the tub was still, I was doing multi-spore. So you were getting pigmented and Mm -hmm. non-pigmented. And these were some of the very early fruits and they were, a lot of them were that small. That's kind of how they started. So now to go back, when you got that fruit, did you clone that fruit or did you just swab that fruit? I cloned that fruit. You cloned. Correct. And then grew. So yep. th- are these still clone fruits or no. have, did you had gone through some spores at that point? No, those would just be like the brothers and sisters of that original okay. fruit. So they okay. were plucked off of BRF cakes as well. Gotcha. Okay. So what you're looking at here is going to be the first isolated iceberg tub ever in the history of man was here was this one and um i think the next slide as well is a kind of a better picture of you know the whole tub a little further along so what we see see crack exactly yeah that's even in the very first isolation we were getting some of these cracked caps i say we i was getting these cracked caps all right and then the next slide i believe is more close up yeah so this one it was a couple days later we got this guy here and you can see the other one up top Mm -hmm. um looking like a little marshmallow but i mean right off the bat this is what we were you know was happening so i thought it'd just be fun (laughs) to show where we started and where Mm -hmm. we're at now um that big old beast and i mean why did that thing weigh like 300 oh no it was two 222 i think oh okay. okay 221 something like that but you're looking at here, this is a progression of five, four generations, I believe, five generations later, you know, so, and I mean, this is, you're talking years in between the two. Mm -hmm. Um, It's been, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to really bring something to be, you know, what we see is valuable. Yeah. So, so, okay. You clone the first fruit, grew that, 
once you how long did you use the clone culture before you started swabbing was that do you just do like one grow and then started swabbing i've gone back to spore once on this but the okay. iceberg is very 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 light on spores and of course they're okay. clear spores right. um so the last time I did a serial dilution, I'm working on crossing Iceberg with Hillbilly and Iceberg with Thrasher right now. Actually, I have tubs that are coming in and they have pins, so I'm pretty stoked about Ooh. that. We'll see soon. But um, I, I tried to do a serial dilution on Iceberg, and I was able to isolate one spore. One out of all the plates, you know. It's, it's difficult yeah. with this one. All right, let me keep going here. So... And I think what gets lost in the conversation a lot of the time is that Iceberg has, you know, a partner that's pigmented that it just didn't get as popular. But Tylee EI, you can see here, obviously, mm -hmm. phenotypically pretty similar, but they've been worked separately ever since I first isolated Iceberg. It just so happened, you know, Iceberg became really popular. So I'm putting more work on it, spending more time on it. Um, but there, I think we forget about poor Tylee EI sometimes. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I know. I'll, I I'll be glad to hear always. that. <laughs> I love it too. But this was so. This was the first um, isolated Thai Leap Yai tub. Okay. That I had coming out. You know, sit right alongside the iceberg. Nice. And these are some of the fruits that you're gonna get out of there. Um, let me see what the next slide. So this is a better picture. They, I mean, they have been worked separately. So you're going to get some phenotypical differences that you may see in one and not the other. Right. I have never once seen Ty Leapi crack a cap. Never. So I almost feel like you just said that like it was a challenge. Oh, I welcome it because we're about to talk about a challenge. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I'm that's... all for it. If someone can get those caps to crack without right. dehydrating their tub to hell and back, um, I'd be very crack interested caps. to see. Yeah. Oh, those are my looks babies. Like those work. Yeah, I hope they do the job or else you got a problem. Yeah. All right, let me. Here we so, go. So, oftentimes I get people telling me all the time that they look just like Hillbilly. So, I think uh, a year ago or so, I had been I was actually growing both at the same time, so I decided to do a little comparison between the two and you got hillbilly on top obviously and the tie leaf on the bottom um i mean so i have a little i have a little something to say about that statement um at the end of the day we are growing cubensis right and Correct. so all these games that we're playing with cubensis spores it's you know it's like uh dogs right like they just keep doing shit with dogs and they get different dogs over 10 20 thousand years we're kind of doing the same thing so and i think there have been many instances and and we might talk to a few people about some of these uh instances where somebody gets very convinced that somebody stole some of their genetics because something that somebody claims they just isolated you know it's like if george lopez is telling a joke on the west coast at the same time that uh you know uh George Carlin is telling a joke on the East Coast. They could have come up with the joke independently on their own, telling the joke at the same time, but depending upon who likes who, they're going to start saying, oh, well, he stole this joke and, and that. But at the end of the day, we are working within the species of Cubensis, and there is phenotypes that just want to re-express and, and, and present themselves. So that's well, what I, I always think is, well, yeah, okay, sure. Maybe they do look a little similar, but the. Right. And a cap can only present so many ways, right? Like right. it's, you're going to run into some overlap, but I do think it is interesting um, at least to compare the two potency wise. I'm not totally sure. I do have a lot of things I'm going to be having tested this year because that's okay. one of my big things. I want to start having test results on the website. Yeah. So you can kind of gauge what you're looking at. Obviously when I grow something may not be exactly the same as when you grow it, but at least we can get a baseline, you know, to, at least relative Correct. to each other. Right. Right. I also think, so it also says something about the breeders uh, ethic or their business practice that, they're, that you have an interest, you're going to spend some money, you're going to try to get some level of baseline understanding about, you know, alkaloid content, psilocybin content, et cetera. Right. And uh, I think that's good. 
I would love to have an answer for people when they tell me, well, how potent is it? And I can't answer that question because right. what it is for me, and maybe I had it on a full stomach and you didn't, you haven't eaten all day. It's just, it's disingenuous. I think when someone answers that question or like, oh, it's so visual or it's so body. And it's like, that's all bullshit. Sorry. Yes. It's all bull. So, you know, I would love to have some numbers to give to people because I don't like shoving stuff down people's throat that isn't accurate. Yeah, well, that's, you know, it's kind of like uh, uh, a lot of people are very enamored by trip reports, and I love them for their entertainment value. Sure. But, uh, you know, if you tell me, well, I took this, and this is what happened, and I think that if I take the same thing, the exact same thing's going to happen to me, that's just it's just not going to happen. So. Right. It's kind of silly, and it, it affects, even if we have numbers to say, oh, this tested at 1% or whatever, how it affects you will not be the same as how it affects me. Right. But at least we could have a number to put on it to get some sort of relativity. Exactly. Exactly. And this was actually, this is a kind of fun to show um, how genetics can change over. This was only, so the top one was a multi-spore of the Thai Leap AI that I ran. Mm, this was only about six or eight months ago. I ran it alongside the isolation that's being isolated for say four generations so you have multi-spore versus the isolation um, and that multi-spore was from very far back so i think it's fun to look at you know what can happen over several generations it looks good to me <laughs> either way right looks good to me either way i think so yes. too it's been quite um, a journey i'll say that much so uh, your Instagram uh, is, even though I like to say Miss Mush SoCal, it's actually MMSC Labs. Well, the original Instagram was Miss Mush SoCal, correct? But I think we're on account number three now. Right. And like that's I why I post earlier. all my pictures on Patreon. If largely speaking, if you go on my Patreon, the pictures are free. I just need cool. somewhere safe that I can post fruit and not keep getting deleted because it's getting very exhausting to have to go and re-add everybody and beg everyone to follow you yeah. back again and no one wants to hear that you know <laughs> i just want to be consistent yeah um, well and I, you have a great you have i mean hundreds of posts and you keep people up on your your daily practice and i i i think you're you're doing something i think this is why more people should probably be using Patreon because it's right. a way to give people insight. You know, some people want it. Some people are like, stay away from me. I'm doing this by myself. And then other people, you know, want their hand held or somebody needs a coach. There's so many different ways people learn and get into stuff. And so for you to just have created the Patreon in a way that allows people to kind of keep up with what's going on, see what you got dropping, um, all that kind of stuff. I, I think it's pretty great. And it's fun, you know, to keep up with Iceberg as it evolves. Um, yes. I feel very fortunate to be doing what I'm doing right now with Iceberg because it was so early on in mycology for me. Like the first clones that I took of Iceberg, Fung Straight had to pour me plates and send them to me because I didn't even know how to pour plates yet. If right. it hadn't been for Fung Straight, I, you all wouldn't be growing Iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> he's well, he's been a friend of mine for a while and amen. he was kind enough to not only send me plates but to help me walk through you know taking these cultures and what i need to do to sector it and right. the first person i ever talked to about sectoring was fung straight and i don't know there's been just such immense support that i've received recently in the past and i'm eternally eternally grateful like i don't have words to express like how grateful and how happy i am to be doing this well, that's this community at its best, and and it is, seems to be more often at its best than at its worst, which is great. Um, Mostly, yeah, when 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 we come together and help each other out and stop fighting and you, you know share the information and uh, bring everybody up rather than oh no, I got to push you down, I got to push you down, oh your competition push you down, and it's just no. There's lots of room at the work. table. It's just. I would just yeah. love to see that table occupied with people who have like strong ethics in the game. Right. And yeah, I know you're going to talk about that next, um, but yeah. it's a big thing with me too. And it, I've caught some shit for like really being about it a lot, but I have a lot of strong feelings about ethically yeah. sourcing genetics and 
you know, supporting people who are actually putting in the work, not someone who just duplicates a culture and is like, oh, it's on my menu now. It's yes. like you've never even run it. Like, let's be real. We are but... going to talk about all that. Um, oh, yeah. So we'll and, you could save it for the next you, one. But... Me and many other people have all sorts of opinions. And, and my hope is that we're going to move towards a consensus and something that, that can be an actual you know, written code that, that people can choose to follow or not follow. So hopefully that all works out. But with that said, before you go, we have to talk about um, what we're going to do. So guys, I thought uh, I'm always trying to figure out a way of integrating. Uh, I think in my mind, I think the best thing my discord can be is a place for all the people that love what we're doing on the podcast to then integrate some of the knowledge that and ideas that they're getting on the podcast uh, with experienced growers or new growers, and uh, you know they can you can be a teacher, you can be a learner, you can be all those things. And uh, so I thought, well, hey, if we're gonna kind of get the behind the scenes story on how Iceberg came to be, maybe we should do a grow along. Let's do an Iceberg grow along. I so agree. for I all you for guys it. who have not grown Iceberg yet or Ty Leap AI, uh, Ms. Marsh had the idea. She said, well, if we're going to do an iceberg grow, let's do an iceberg Ty Leap AI grow yes. so that people can concurrently grow both and they can see morphological similarities. They can see um, maybe they, you know, have a repeat of what happened to her. Maybe that throws an albino and then you get to play that game and we can learn from that. And or maybe someone's going to be able to crack a Ty Leap AI. I don't know. I, I mean, maybe somebody gets yeah, we'll a crack see. cap on a Ty Leap AI. So um, she's doing, um, and I don't, is it live on your site yet? It's not live yet. Um, as soon as I'm off the air, I'm going to go ahead and make those listings live, but they're okay. not live just yet. All right. So her site, which is listed here, mmsc.company.site, um, go there and under her genetics, um, she is doing 30 liquid culture bundles and 30 plate bundles. So this would be a total of 60 people who can participate in this grow along. Um, obviously, if you already have the genetic and you just want to, for, for fun, you know, re-participate, that's absolutely yep, cool. Yep, let's do too. it, please. Reach out and let me know you want to get in on it. But the goal uh, and what makes grow alongs really fun is, uh, seeing everybody move through the process, you start gathering uh, some consensus data about the speed of colonization, how genetics are behaving, stuff like that. So we can also learn some things collectively by doing these. And then, of course, at the end, it's the, the big money shot of just seeing everybody's tubs all the time. And it, it's just fun. It's going to so be a lot of do fun, that. I think. Um, I have the, the links in the description on YouTube. Um, for both the plate cultures and the liquid culture, um, liquid culture 40 Correct. for the two shipped and yep. then uh, plate cultures 50 for the two shipped. So yep. pick your poison um, and we'll have 60 people. And then tomorrow um, I will create the grow along channel and then everybody who participates shoot me uh, a message or, or maybe Miss Mush will let me know who's in. And uh, everybody will get a special role so that they can go to the Grow Along channel and, you know, we can have like a little posse. And little and of course, I'll be stuff. active in the Grow Along channel, um, helping yes. everybody out if there's questions or issues or concerns. Um, I will say now that I just for the website, so I don't get a million questions. I only take Cash App. If I had PayPal or credit card, I would make them available. But um, I've been kicked off of all of them so far. So, um, right. apparently we're criminals, so we're being yep. treated as such. Um, but so cash app, it is cash app only. Um, cool. I'm going to say this was probably going to be limited to the U S cause I don't think I'm going to have time to do cash in the mail for my UK right. people. Um, again, if I could make it available and get credit card processing back, I would, but we've got this stigma around what we're doing still. And, um, until that, I, you know, we're trying to end it, you know, but. Until that happens, this is what our options are, unfortunately. Maybe, maybe we can get creative and figure out if, if there's somebody just desperately trying to make it happen over there. Well, maybe we can powwow and figure something out. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see how desperate they are. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, well, so this is the, the inaugural Behind the Veil 
of Iceberg. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks Hope for having me. Hope you guys me. decide to participate in the grow along. And like Miss Mush said, she'll be hanging out in the channel trying to, you know, help people along and give some little insider scoop on, uh, on Iceberg. Um, yep. Because all we know right now is just the tip of the iceberg. And she will it's never just the, the tip. Let's be real. It's never. See, you know. You already know. All right, we went there, and it's only 10 o'clock, guys. Yep, good starting All right. point. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Uh, talk to you soon. Bye. All right, guys, so there we go, behind the veil. Next up, uh, Miss Mush kind of uh, spilled the beans a little bit. The next topic we're going to talk about mushroom ethics. I, I got to tell you that uh, it's been in the back of my, my mind for the almost the entire year that I've been growing. I, uh, I'm an ER nurse. We have a very ethical profession. Uh, I work in healthcare, which healthcare has its own problems, but it's a relatively ethical profession. Um, and uh, when I saw a lot of stuff happening within the community, some things that were just obviously unethical, and then other things where it's like, oh, no, there's some gray spaces here. And uh, we should probably start figuring out what we think about those gray spaces and see if we can't come to some sort of uh, conclusion about them. So here's my idea. This year, every episode, we are going to be talking to somebody else about their perspective on ethical dilemmas that they've had as growers, breeders, vendors. Uh, we're going to bring in uh, newbie buyers who've been burned by people, and we're going to try to explore what maybe a consensus around, uh, you know, good and bad behavior in the community might look like. So the absolute first person I thought of, uh, he is an absolute statesman and advocate for, uh, for vendors and for breeders. Um, he, he runs a tight ship. Uh, I don't think I have literally ever heard a single person say a negative thing about him. And, uh, so my immediate go-to was Dave Wombat and I reached out to Dave and he said, of course, this is a good topic. Let's talk about it. So without further ado, let me bring on we're going to bring on Dave Wombat, who, by the way, um, just launched a new website, wombatgenetics.net. Pretty easy to remember. Um, I'm sure he's going to be sold out in three seconds, but don't worry. He'll, he'll, he'll make more swabs for us. Uh, so let me bring on Dave. What's up, man? Testing, testing. Can you hear me? I can, yeah. You, you could probably go up a touch on the mic, but I can hear you. Hello. Did I just yell? Yeah. Does that, does that work? No, that's good. Yeah. I, can uh, hear you. I don't know how to do the microphone thing. So uh, if you can hear me, we can hear me. Uh, yes, I can hear I you. Good? You sound good. Okay. Uh, it's funny you, you mentioned the uh, the health profession as, as ethical. And uh, I just recently had some some surgical emergency surgery issues over the last couple of years and some, you know, some, some real problems and uh, medical professionals saved my life, like absolute heroes. Uh, the, yeah. that's, that's the, the people that apply the medicine. Uh, then you've got the insurance side of it, which is unethical the opposite side of the ethics coin, yes. uh, how we can rape yeah. people for the most amount of money and deny them services that they need, basically. Uh, the so, worst so it, day of your life. How can we <laughs> squeeze the most money out of you? That's right. Yes, That's right. I'm still, I'm actually paying off. I'm still working on paying off a lawsuit from, uh, wow. some, some hospital bills before my surgery that insurance from my job denied. Right. So, uh, so yeah, they catch up to you eventually. Uh, well, my background, uh, professionally before the whole mycology thing, uh, I did a lot of restaurant management. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and so like that, that provided a lot of the foundation for my idea of customer service. Uh, the customer's always right. Uh, and you know, they're not, they're, they're, they're wrong just as much as anybody else is, yeah. but as, as a business, you want to take care of them. Like, yeah. yeah, that's, that's how you take care of people. You're going to lose money on people that try to scam you for an extra freebie every now and then, mm -hmm. but you'd rather lose that little five cents than burn a legitimate customer and hurt their feelings. You know? So it's, it's all yeah. about treating people how you want to be treated. Uh, but before, before I got into this whole restaurant thing, uh, I was in the army and, uh, 
and I experienced kind of mixed ethical things there. You have a lot of people like the soldiers on the ground firmly believe in what they're doing, but there's somebody up above them that's kind of selling your services for ulterior motives and you're just out there following orders. So it's, it's kind of weird. And I kind of saw like all of that, but so like, we've got this, this whole mushroom thing, right? Uh, what, yeah. what's, what's the biggest question, like ethical question. Uh, the one that I see the most is uh, renaming other people's stuff to sell it, to make a buck. That's a classic. And, and, and that's just, I mean, I, I feel like there's some mixture in there. There's some people that are like brand new to mycology. They just dip their toes into it. They've grown two or three grows. They're really excited about it. They're excited. And then suddenly they realize, Hey, I can actually make some money. Like now I've got spores. So, so, okay. So you've got somebody else's spores, but they're yours now. Cause you grew them. Right. Right. So, so the responsible thing to do is just to be transparent about the the heritage of what you're working with uh if you have uh let's just say a golden teacher uh, i bought golden teacher from bill or whoever and and i grow it and it looks the same as bill's golden teacher but now it's my golden teacher so i'm gonna call it brass teacher right. you know it's a little shady you know and then you put it up on your menu you're like look i've got golden teacher and brass teacher it's the same fucking thing you know but it's an extra name that you can add to the list. And so like you see a lot of menus that are fluffed with like things that are really just kind of different expressions of the same thing that aren't going to repeat, but right. we just named them the first time they grew and, and didn't, didn't, you know, stabilize them over generations or whatever. We're just trying to have a thick menu. And then we offer you, Hey, you get a discount if you buy 10. So now we've got like 30 things on the menu and you can buy, you can buy 30 things. And it's yes. just, it's just, it's just sales. It's sales. It's sales. And it's, it's not exclusive to mushrooms. Like, look at, go to the grocery store. You've got a 12 pack of Dr. Pepper and right next to it, you've got a 12 pack of, of Dr. John or whatever, you know, they, they make their own, they just remake it and rename it. It's the same shit. It is. Uh, it, it's business, you know? So there's like, I don't know. You, I mean, you, yeah. You, I mean, when you think about, so Coke comes along and then somebody else said, well, that's not fair. Coke gets all the, so we're going to be Pepsi and. But well, so, and they could probably argue, yeah. you know, if you did HPLC testing on it, that theirs is slightly different, you know, <laughs> yes. but, but the same thing applies to the mushrooms because like, okay, let's, let's take uh, Jack Frost. For example, I grow Jack Frost. I grow it for, I actually did four generations before I released it, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't sell people the clone of the fourth generation. I sold them spores. Right. So every Jack Frost that left my care is actually the son of Jack Frost. Right. And it's slightly different. Like if you were to patent a genetic, you can say, hey, this exact genetic sequence is patented and nobody else can copy it. The second you grow from spores, that's changed. Yeah. So, so I mean, yeah, it's, it's fuzzy, you know, right. it's, it's really fuzzy. But the, the, the most thing you want to do is, is you want to be responsible for your own, like, due diligence. You want to, yeah. like, you want to grow things multiple times to know that what you're giving the customer is going to be at least you'll have some Roughly. idea of what it's going to do. Uh, that's the, that's the other thing I was going to bring up is like, this was another complaint that I saw is people receiving a culture and then immediately turning around and multiplying it on plates and selling it without ever growing it out and knowing what it's actually going to do. And that's another, that's another eh, iffy vendor strategy, you know, it's like, but, but something you'll see in, in the restaurant business or any business is quick money is usually short money. Oh, like nice. you can jump in with some shady stuff and you can make some bucks and people are going to get pissed off and your name's going to be dirt. And then you can come back with a different profile name a couple weeks later and try to do something else. Right. But, but, <laughs> but people you remember, it. you know, yeah. what, what do they always say? We're doing uh, in the restaurants. They would always say like, uh, customers are much more likely to leave a negative review. Oh uh, yeah. If they go in and eat their food and are happy and go about their day, like they're not really thinking about it. But if you give them some crappy food, it's stuck in their head and they want to do something about it. So they're much more likely to say something negative than they are something positive. So, I mean, and that, and that sticks with you. Yeah. But you got to be, you just got to be, uh, you got to be responsible, you know? Like if I, okay, here's another example. I've got stuff that I don't know what it is. Uh, I, I grew something, I mislabeled it. I don't know what the fuck it is. I can make up a new name for it or I can be honest about it and say, Hey, everybody, I don't know what this is. Uh, but look at it. It's kind of cool, you know? And after 
couple generations. If it starts doing something repeatedly cool, then maybe I can name it, you know, but, right. but you don't want to just turn around and sell it right away. Cause you still don't know what if it was, what if it was a tiny bit of bacteria in your tub that made it express funny. And then right. it's not actually the genetics that look that way. That's, yeah. that's, that's the whole, uh, it was always, uh, five generations has always been like the kind of like the community standard for stabilization. And you want at least three of those generations to be consistent back to back without significant change, without multiple morphologies in the same tub to be able to say that, okay, I think this is stabilized or you right. could now a thing that you always do though. And I think this is the counterpoint to, so when I talked to, um, Michael, mama, Angela, of course, she like her and Miss Mush both, liken their 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 isolations to their babies right so yeah they, they want it perfect before they release it to the public and you have things that are that way that are very consistent but then you also have stuff where you're like i'm gonna put this out here but just so you know you were probably the first vendor who ever i ever saw describe something as wild or unpredictable and like hey I, you work it it's you're gonna enjoy yourself it's gonna be a new experience but it's definitely not stable. Well, so but, but I'm still being I'm still it. being transparent. Yeah, you're being transparent. <laughs> that's the whole point. And and I the unstable stuff a... is fun. A lot of people like playing with the unstable stuff. The, the yes. old mindset was, I ordered this and it doesn't look like the picture. Why? You know, and, and people are mad. But now people are like, I grew this and three different things came up in the tub and it's exciting. You know, like that's, and it's fun. All three things. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, so... So I'm hearing and agree 100% with you. You really can never go wrong with being very transparent. That's, that's well, yeah. Being honest, not only with other people, but also with yourself. Yes. Like, so yeah, just being transparent. I get a Jack Frost from you. I, I get a swab set from you. So I germinate them. I grow them. I swab that fruit and I say, Hey, I'm selling sports, Jack Frost spore swabs originally sourced from Dave Wombat. I've been transparent with what I'm doing, right? Well, you know, here's something funny. When I was putting together this website, uh, I haven't been on a spore website in, in forever. Uh, I've actually only ever been to mushrooms.com is the only one I've ever bought from. I bought from them 25 years ago, another 12 years after that, and another 12 years after that. So I've, I've been to a spore website like three times in my life. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've gone on there and looked a couple times, but I mean, I, I've only bought from one three times. Um, right. But uh, I was looking at other websites because I was like, well, I need some ideas, you know, so I'm going to look at some other spore websites. Do you know that there's lots of places selling like Wombat, Tat and Jack Frost? Oh, yeah. Like it's it's everywhere. And everywhere, and, dude. And here, here's something that like is a big thing in the mushroom community is like, oh, they're selling my thing. Like, you know, that's mine. Well, it, it's only yours until you let go of it. And then it's out there. You know, I mean, you got a kid, you know, they grow up, they turn into people. They're their own person. They are their own person. Even from the time they're not grown up, yeah. they're their own person, you know? Yeah. And, 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 and that's something that's never bothered me as a creator is, is I always looked at it as a compliment. If, if I produced something that other people like, that makes me happy. Yeah. Uh, Jack Frost being like probably the most popular thing I've created. Yeah. But uh, if, if I was to get like a dollar in royalties, from every Jack Frost swab that everybody else sold, I wouldn't have had to open my own website. You'd have I'd, a lot I'd more free set, time you know? for sure. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's not about that. You know, it's, it's, you know, like it, you see a lot of that jealousy in the community. It's usually with people with like, it's like their first baby. Like this is their first project. And it usually comes up as a situation with me and these two partners or this one partner, we're going to work on this together. I'm going to send you this. We're going to grow it out and compare it. And, yeah. and then next thing you know, partner B is already got it for sale on their, on their spore list. And you're like, Hey man, like right. that's not supposed to be out there yet. And you're collecting money on it. And that's my money. And you were supposed to be my friend or whatever. And, right. and now, now, so where does that fall in the ethical realm of things? Like that's, it, 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 are they really doing anything wrong or is it just that your expectations were higher than they should have been? Or maybe you you had no formal business partnership that had no well, clear well, then Never. that's the thing, you know, this is kind of an underground industry. So it's You're like not gonna have that. honor amongst thieves, you know, it's okay. like there is some kind of code, I guess, 
but it's mostly like snitches get stitches. That's about all. Yeah. Right. So it's just, it, you've messed up. So now I'm going to shank you. And uh, it's, that's not a good way to live. You know, we're supposed to be all this love and light kind of thing. Right. You know, we're, we're, we're happy mushroom people. Yeah. So if we could just be as adaptive as the mushrooms are and, and work together as a colony, like we're supposed yeah. to, like things would be better, I think. Yeah. So um, I think I referenced this one other time, but uh, old arts and crafts furniture, there was a company called Stickley and they used to make uh, some very popular furniture. They would also publish the, the, the blueprint, the, the three yes. new drawings of their furniture and people. So if you were crafty, you could just do it right. yourself. And everybody, somebody interviewed the owner about, well, why on earth would you give away your actual three view drawings of this furniture? And he was like, well, if some guy can't afford to buy our pretty expensive furniture, but he can build it, he's just given us free advertising. Yep. He's just spread our brand a little bit further. And what a great thing we can do to also give somebody who can afford our product a chance to own our product well and I think this is this is something that i have noticed also doing this website searching is that more websites are now mentioning the creator when they can i uh, where it used great. to be a lot of them like just had like just here it is and you can buy it you know without any kind of uh, now, credit this is not so much about ethics but a thing that i notice in this community is um, and you're very good about this. The first time I received uh, genetics from you, it's like, wow, this is this guy gave me an experience. This is yeah, I got some cool stickers. There was a card. Uh, everything was unique and uh, you know had a lot of personality in it. And I was like, wow, this guy gets it. Like he, uh, Missy Maiko also did this where she had a handwritten letter and it was like, oh, he just gave me an experience. This is cool. And that's something that you're doing and it takes time and energy and money to do all that stuff. And that's why anytime somebody asks me, oh, well, where should I get Jack Frost? Well, you should, you should try to get it from Dave. Now, obviously the website's going to make that a little bit easier. Well, I don't have it on there yet, actually. That's the, I, I don't actually have any Jack Frost. I have a tiny bit, like I'm, I'm working on building Maybe it back Maybe you up. can get someone to sell you some. <laughs> Well, I just, I stopped growing it because everybody already had it. So I didn't have to bother with it, but now people are asking for it again. But, yeah. you but now, like now that I've back gotten back into growing it again, it's throwing different phenotypes. So now I'm like, well, wait yeah. a second. Like maybe I can play with this and play yeah. with that and see what I can get out of it. But, but there's, there's the, the website's going to be uh, a good way to streamline because I've always been notoriously hard to reach uh, just because right. I'm, I'm doing a million things and I'm not, actually vending full time, you know, that's just like you happen to catch me when I'm looking at the screen and I see your message, then you might get to talk to me and get an order. in. Uh, but the website automates that, you know? Yeah. So one of the things that I've been trying to figure out in my head is how do I translate my one-on-one -on -one communication experience into this new format where we're not having a conversation to do the sale anymore. Now you're just, it's automated. You're clicking a button and a package is going to get sent in the mail. So, uh, I'm ordering, I ordered new packaging materials and I've got all kinds of things to package with and it's going to be new and it's going to be different. It's not going to be the same kind of packaging that I've been doing with the yeah. cards because uh, I have to do something that's more volume oriented. That's repeatable. Yeah. Like even just the idea of individually folding cards for each order is kind of mind boggling with the website. Right. Like I, I can't do it. So we're going to, we're going to switch to a different kind of packaging, but I still want to give it that personal touch. So I'm going to be like, I got, I got a, I told everybody on the website that packages are going to start shipping on the third. And that's because I'm not going to have my, my postage label printer until the third. Uh, so, but I've got until then to come up with some new stickers to put in the orders and uh, it's going to be fun. I got, I got stuff to do tomorrow. That's great. You know, it just made me think, I'm like, of course he has the packaging dialed because he used to work in a kitchen, right? He puts the garnish on. He, he presentation, puts, yeah. Yeah, the presentation, man. You yes. There there's definitely some wisdom and something to be said um along with maybe uh talking about ethics, uh I think the the work ethic is part of that as well. So I hope to be talking about like you were saying, you know, if you if you're isolating something uh 
five generations, ideally three consistent generations before you say, well, okay, I can say this is what this is. Um, well, now, and I often, even with like projects that I care about, you know, that I'm like seriously interested in, I often send out the earlier generation stuff as the bonus swaps with my order just to get other people growing them. I don't tell them about them. I don't tell them what it is. I just throw something else in there. It's got a weird label on it. And, uh, and they may grow it and like say, Hey, you know, eventually I might see a post on Facebook, like, Hey, I got this swab and I grew this. And then I can be like, Hey, that's, that's this project and it looks good. And it's, you know, but that way I'm kind of crowdsourcing the, the, the verification for the stabilization. Yeah. Uh, I was just talking to Ed about that because he, I think he's done like 10 net crosses and he's, he's scratching his head going, I can never work all these genetics. Like I, he goes, well, no, I cause got, yeah, it's, it's like mycelium, it branches, work. it branches and multiplies. You gotta get it out there. Yes. So I envision, well, simultaneously, everyone should definitely be trying to isolate and perfect and, and come up with, you know, a finished product, man you're never going to work all your F1 spores. So if, if you off a, a first cross or something, well, even if, if you just grew one fruit, you might have billions of them. Billions. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So you could, and so we were just talking and this is not that far off from what tat syndicate was. Um, but I was saying, Hey Ed, what we probably need to do is throw out this idea of like little, um, little groups of people that are working together and, you know, hey, I'm going to, I'm, I'm a, a breeder. I'm going to start working some crosses, some cereal dilutions, what have you, but I can't work all these genetics. So, hey, anybody willing to grow F1 and F2 stuff for me, you know, and whatever you get from it, cool. That's, that's yours. All I would ever ask is that, you know, you, you say where it comes from. I can uh, what see do you that. think about that? I can see that like being like a pressure that you would feel if, you had like a job that you had mm -hmm. to go to every day. Like, whereas I'm, I'm, I'm at home doing Michael full time. Yes. You can uh, it, so yes. I'm not sure if there's any number of genetics that I can't juggle at once. Cause I, I right. go through a lot like, but I'm doing, I'm literally doing like batches of agar grain and substrate every day. Every like single every day yes. I'm doing, I'm doing all of it. What Small I'm, doing weekly, I'm not doing a huge doing batch at a time, but I've got it in this rotation where I'm like constantly in every phase of production at the same time. Right. And then I'm also harvesting something every day too. So that's, you know, there's always something. Uh, yeah. But, but I think that, I think the group, the group idea, like these grow alongs has been a, a, mm -hmm. a great concept. Uh, Yoshi was the one that really got that going uh, yeah. and, uh, and, and it's fantastic and everybody really loves it. Uh, and I think that's a great community building. Like not only is it, is it good for like, just like communication and whatnot, but just, you know, building up everybody's experience level, being able to, Hey, I'm having problems with this. You got more people chiming in to help you. Like it's, it's, it's really. Yeah, that, that's what I like about it. You have, um, so say you have 30 people who are participating in the grow along, 10 of them really know what they're doing. 10 kind of know what they're doing and 10 don't know what they're doing. You, but they're excited. You're, 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 yeah, but they're excited. <laughs> but you're moving through that process together. So as you get to a certain stage, it's almost like a great way if you're brand new and you're looking to do your first grow, I would definitely say, hey, we're doing a grow along. Come do the grow along. You'll have 60 people growing the exact same thing that you can now gauge your progress against seeing all this other stuff. Yeah. I think it, I think it's a great way. And answer great your tool. newbie questions along the way as well, you know, which, you know, that's hard to do. Like in just like out in public, let's like, like, let's take the shroomery group, for example, that has like 200,000 plus people in it. Uh, someone will throw a, a, a question out there like, Hey, wh what do I do about this? And it, you know, they get a lot of answers, but none of them are from friends. Right. You know, they're from 200,000 plus strangers and there's good advice and there's bad advice and it's right. not. And then you know, and it's, it's too much advice. It's too much advice. Yeah, it really is. And it, you get all these different conflicting answers. And and the fact of the matter is there is no one way to skin the cat. Yeah. So like when you have like I, I've never I've never been about the whole tech shaming thing. Yeah. Like people, you know, obviously you've been in the Facebook groups, you know, like the, the Facebook has this like massive hatred for Uncle Ben's. Uh, it's not that it's not functional. It's just that it's not reliable. But if you look at it as, as what it is and accept it for being, Hey, this is a, a high risk 
method that can work, it's still a good gateway into growing for a lot of people. Like some yeah. people hear about it, they know it's super easy, so they try it. It may it may fail, it may succeed, but either way, they learn and they move on to the next step. It doesn't work. Let's say it doesn't work. Well, now you got people saying, oh, well, don't do that. Try PF Tech. And you're like, oh, what's that? I never heard of it. I only heard of Uncle Ben's. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's like a gateway drug. It's, 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 it's just weed, but you'll be doing harder stuff in no time. <laughs> right. Yes. Well, and so the other thing that I, I talk a lot about, uh, it's getting a little off topic, so I'll be brief. Um, but some people be like, I think this is contaminated. Should I toss it? And I just say, don't toss it yet. You might not have ever even seen trick. You might not have ever even seen wet bubble. Like, well, and that's a problem with those, don't those leave it Facebook by... question diagnoses is yeah. you got people telling you, Oh, take it outside and burn it. Like get it out of your house right away. Yeah. And, like, and honestly, it's, it's not dangerous. Maybe you should it, see what it looks like. I mean, I will remove it from a tent. If I'm growing in a tent, I'll put it sure. somewhere else. Separate it. But yeah, Quarantine I want it. all my plates that contaminate, uh, you know, oh, cool. I got, looks like my hand got too close to the edge of the, the Petri dish. It looks like I got a little staff in there or some yeast or whatever. Cool. Let's just let it grow. So we start learning what this stuff looks like. Well, too. well and, I, and I've told I think I, I might have said this on the last show, but uh, I'll have I'll have a tub that goes green. I take a lot of risks with multi spore grows, uh, searching for phenos, uh, and so like contam gets in. Sometimes I have bad spawn, and I try and run it anyway just to see like maybe it'll spoot out something. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'll have a tub go green, and it'll be in the middle of a stack of tubs surrounded by other tubs. The one tub is completely green. The other tubs around it are just fine. Yeah. I don't have micropore tape on my holes. I have open holes on my tubs. They can breathe. They're they're yeah. supposed to fruit fast with lots of air. Right. And so there's nothing keeping that trick in the tub. But it's still just in that one tub that I put the dirty spawn in. It doesn't yeah. spread to the other tubs. Like everybody tells you it's going to. It's going to eat your whole house. It's going to eat you. Uh, it's it's yeah. gross. You know, don't don't go waving it around. You know, you don't want to have a huge spore load in your house. Get rid of it. You know, right. don't don't let it go too far. But but it's really not, it's not the end of the yeah. world. Yeah. And the, the, the other one on Facebook you see a lot is the, the jar. Does my jar look okay? Bacterial, bacterial, throw it away. Like bacterial, but it could still be okay. There's different yeah. bacteria, you know, and, and different, different, uh, different strains seem to handle it better than others. Like some of them will fruit just fine despite it, you know? So yeah. So a lot of people too, the other thing I notice is people will listen to everybody's advice and man, they'll, you know, they'll think they're a pro right out of the gate because everything's working well for them. They get no contamination. Everything's going well. And then like six months down the road, they get one problem and they're, they're melting down like, oh, I don't. Oh, oh, Everything oh. was great. What happened? <laughs> what? Like, yeah. yeah. Do I need a new kitchen counter to do my transfers on? Is it my kitchen I counter? I a new scalpel. It's got to be the scalpel. And yeah, instead of just I, like, I did a no. post. It's probably been a, a year or two now, but I posted my scalpel blade. Uh, I said I'm I'm changing my scalpel blade. I've had the same blade on my scalpel for I don't even know how many years it was on there, but it was so right. scarred and and raggedy. But I mean, you flame it red hot and it's still good. Yeah. Uh, but I changed it out for a new one, and now my new one's raggedy too. But I I, I ordered a, a one dollar scalpel on Wish that came with ten blades, and I've used two of the blades, and it's been yeah. years. Yeah. Years now. Yeah. I, I have, I have never spent more than $10 on a scalpel handle. I think I got a kit like you're talking about for. But I see. I feel like being so. in the medical profession, you'd be kind of bougie and you'd want like a fancy one. Nope. Cause you see like, yeah, I mean, know, I sell the sterilizer, but no, my, the scalpel's not bougie at all. And I'm the same way. I replace mine more frequently than you, but not that often. Cause I'm also, I also usually use them for, other stuff, you know, for making the sterilizers and stuff. So it seems like my tips always get bent and. Well, yeah, yeah. If you're cutting cutting different materials with it, yeah. besides agar, that's gonna that's exactly. gonna make a difference. Yeah, they they last in agar. Okay, so no, I got one more question yeah. uh, uh, pertaining yeah. to this. So I think a a good example and is uh, Tim Pig's toke that that we've we've seen Two. now. Took okay, took thank you. Um, so took looks amazing. Everybody yes. is salivating, ready to work it. And don't uh, say its name, huh? 
every time you say its name, the release gets pushed back another two weeks. <laughs> okay. It's all right. That it's like the like like, like like Bloody Mary in the mirror. Like, yes. <laughs> I mean, I was talking to somebody one day. They were trying to figure out what was going on, and I was like, I think he just knows he has a really really cool fruit. Yeah, and he's trying to figure out how you know. It's like you don't want your kid to go go away to college and never come back. Well, that's that's something I've, I've seen this happen like with a few vendors. Is they're they're. Uh, they're working towards a big release, you know? And so they want to build up as much stock as they can, because you know, you've only got that first, you've only got that first, first like wave. couple months before somebody else grows it out. Right. So like, you know, that it's going to be, you know, sitting on agar for a while, and then it's going to be on grade and then it's going to be in tubs and then it's everybody's. Right. So, so some people want to build up enough stock so that they can get their mint from it in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, and that's again, like Tim's not a full-time Myco vendor like that's not his his role in life so it, it is kind of a big thing for him you know yeah. so he should he should hold off and make it count and he's got a great a great isolation Super there cool. like it's yeah. fucking fantastic yeah. so so yeah when it does hit the streets like you can better believe it's going to be all over the place in no time oh yeah now so so speaking of that and this sort of probably ties back into ethics on on a certain level so I remember early on uh, buying a couple genetics and then I had genetics. So then somebody said, oh, what is that? Oh, I'll trade you this for that. And so there's a phase in your, your early life where you don't have a lot of money. You're still saving up for a flow hood. You're still saving up for this. You're saving up for that. And so you realize that it's like trading cards. If I can get a couple genetics and I'm smart and I talk with the right people, I can keep trading them so that I can turn five genetics into 25 genetics by, by just doing some trades, right? So I think what happens is people do that and then that just becomes their norm. So even though they get to a point where they could easily give you $25 for your original genetic from the person who did all the work to create it. But because early on they, they they do this little like sports hustle. They, they've kind right. of gotten in the habit of that. Um, so you've spent, you've spent a year and a half working on this thing. Can I trade you this Cambodian print right. that Bill gave me for it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, so, um, I got Casper from the uh, original creator yep. and uh, post pictures. And the next thing you know, a hundred people are asking me for, for Casper. And I say, I, I told you where it came from. Go get it from him, man. It's cool. Go get it. Why don't you just go get it from the guy? Now, if the guy doesn't answer your DMs two weeks later and you really, really want it, I'll DM him. And if he doesn't answer my DMs, then I'll get it for you. That but That is a thing. Like pretty much every Facebook post, uh, you post up some mushroom. The first comment is swabs. Right. Oh, <laughs> yes. Especially your photos. Yes. Everybody wants. Yeah. Well, and, 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 you know, I'm, I'm not, I, I, I'm not, I'm not a big, like save up for release guy. You know, I, I, if you want something that I'm working on, I'm, I'm, share just about everything at some point like early uh but i'm also working on a million things at once so it's like I, i'm not, not hung up on any one particular project at any given time well so it's like uh i used to be a writer and there's a book called writing down the bones and there's a, a chapter in it where they say if you're a real writer you will take everything you've ever written and you'll burn it because you're not what you've written. You are a writer. And the moral of the story, of course, you don't, no one really expects you to burn everything you've ever written. But the point is that what you do is an action. It is a process. It is a practice. It's not, right? So like, yes, Jack Frost is amazing. But the minute you go, well, that's my thing. That's it. Just Jack Frost, just Jack Frost. Jack yeah, what Frost, if I had a Frost. website and that was the only thing on the menu? <laughs> right. And people surely 
uh, you know, go, yeah, Jack Frost, one of the most iconic fruits came from I, I would probably still sell some if that was the only thing on my menu, but people like to have options, you know? Yeah, like, and that's not yeah. you because what you are is a breeder, an experimenter, an explorer. You're trying to find new stuff. You're like, cool, I found that. Next, what can I do yep. now? Yep. Oh, and then and then I, you know, I recently did this uh, this Jack Frost Golden Halo cross attempt ghetto <laughs> cross, and I I'm still wishy washy on whether it actually succeeded, or if I just happened to stumble across a new Jack Frost Fino accidentally, and the Golden Halo is not in there at all. I'm I, there's some there's some things that make me second guess it, but I'm not sure. But either way, it's fucking cool. But it's not exactly. it's not the same as the old Jack Frost. It's something so I might come out, I might release that as like a Jack Frost 2.0 kind of thing or something mm -hmm. sometime soon. I don't know. I got another grow of it coming up pretty soon, but it I mean it's, it's a the really modern age though, out. Dave. You could call it Jill Frost. Well, it's gotta it's gotta have some kind of catchy name. I'm not I'm not gonna make it a sequel to the other one. That's boring. You know, like I gotta give it a new name. But uh it'll it'll be something in the wintry kind of you know yes. realm of ideas for sure. Cool, man. Well, so I think you know, the... I, just, it's like like Yeti. We've we've Yeti is a great isolation, and for all the different crosses and and variations and reverts from it, I think we've pretty much milked every Sasquatch and Bigfoot name you can think of. Uh, right. The only one I, I was I I almost called one Wendigo at one point in time. That that was on my mind. I was like, I'm going to call this one Wendigo, and then I thought about it, and I was like, you know what? The Wendigo is really not a very good myth. Uh, it's a pretty sinister, horrible, like it represents everything greedy and voracious and cannibalistic. And it's, 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 it's not a good, it's not a good look. Right. So I scrapped that one. Yeah. But see, you actually thought about that. That's great. Yeah. I didn't want to have not an evil mushroom. Like, cause you, I, the, what was the one, the one guy that, that I saw one time had uh, one that he wanted to call it baby seal bashers. And, uh, and I was like, who wants to think about that when they're tripping? Like, Just that's... harvested a tub of baby seal bashers. <laughs> and, uh, you know. No, we, we like happy stuff. We want to be happy. Yeah, yeah. So um, so transparency, I think that's the big takeaway. And, yeah, and then that's, also that's just the, the attitude. Uh, I really appreciate the attitude of, um, you know, it's just almost naive to think that the minute it leaves the house that it's not, it's out there now. Like there. Well, that's why you released it. Right. Whether you, whether you meant it that way or not, like that's, what's going to happen. So you can either get upset about it and, and develop an ulcer, or you can realize that's the way the world works and yeah. get started on that next project. So you can release that one. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, no matter what, if you're a quality, if you're a real quality vendor um, and you care about your customers and you have good presentation and customers always right because you want them to like vending with you. You're never going to lose those customers. It's like you said, you know, the customers are re always right. So you have customers. Well, yeah, that's why, that's why they're always right. Cause if the they're one that you treat wrong, shitty is going to go tell everybody else. Yeah. Fuck that place. That right. was what they said in the restaurants. Like the one customer that you piss off that you, you know, he calls and complains and you tell him to fuck off. He's yep. going to call everybody in town. He's going to put everybody. an ad in the paper about you. He's going to, you know, you're, he's going to burn you on every front because now you've got in the upset. day. He's going to take out an ad. Yep. Yeah. So that you got to be pretty serious about, <laughs> but yeah, I think that's yeah. Transparency, uh, transparency is, is number one for me and, uh, and just treating people like you want to be treated. Right. Like that's, you know, we're, we're all in this together yet. Why would you, why would, I mean, okay. As a, as a, as a, as a vendor, you definitely want to encourage new growers to get better at growing rather than like shame them and tell them they suck and they should quit. Cause that's, yes. a, I mean, it could be a future customer, you know, yeah. like I, I get people that are brand new to growing that want to buy from me. And I'm like, they, they're like, Hey, I want, you know, ghost for example. And I'm like, right. okay, but I'm going to tell you out up front, this isn't like a novice grow. Right. Like a, a spore swab is not like an easy start for a, for a newbie grower, you know? So I'll, I'll try to walk them through something else. I'll give them, I'll, I'll sell them the ghost swabs, but I'm going to give them a couple of regular cubes on swabs and maybe a print. 
So now you've got multiple tries to, to start with to get your practice down before you get to those good ones so you don't mess them up. Yeah, and just, I mean, it's the same with, so say I wanted to learn how to play tennis, and I, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to go to this tennis club, I'm going to hire some old guy who knows how to play tennis, and they got to start real simple, right? No, they're they just going to whoop you. They're going to they whoop you right out of the gate. Yeah, it can't be backspin, <laughs> and right? They're not going to start high level with you. It's going to be, can you make the ball bounce on your tennis racket, right? It's going to be really simple. Okay, I got an example for that. Uh, Jiu-jitsu class. You go to right. jiu-jitsu class and you do some warm-up exercises and then they're like, okay, we're going to pair up, we're going to partner up and we're going to take turns applying this arm bar to each other. Right. You know, We're going to go through it. He's going to give you the arm bar, you're going to give him the arm bar. You go back and forth, we're practicing. Okay, so we've done a couple of moves like that and then you get to the last part of the class which is going to be open grappling. Uh, so you're the brand new guy and you get just happened to get paired up with, you know, the black belt guy pro. and he's going to fucking whoop you. You know, he's going to whoop you. You're not ready for that part yet. Right. But if he's a good black belt, he's going to whoop you and then tell you what he did. You know, he's yeah. going to, it's going to be a learning experience still, you know? And right. I just, I just feel like there's, there's this, there's this uh, kind of like this superior attitude in, in the community of people that are like, I'm such a good grower and, and you suck, you know? Right. And, you know, the guy with the the two little rice cakes that has little mushrooms coming off of it, that's perfect medicine for him. And that's what he needs. And when he sees those mushrooms come up, it's like Christmas morning, you know, like, don't shame that. Like, it's beautiful. It's beautiful right. and it's wonderful. And it's a step in the right direction. And just we could all we could all be more supportive of each other. A hundred percent. Yeah, I was just talking to a cultivator who... um I don't know why, but man, all he wants to do is just bring people down. Just it's if he doesn't like you, even if I agree with the guy, like, yeah, okay, I see where you're coming from. But all he's so negative. His persona on social media is so negative. And I, I just keep saying, dude, I'm like, I like you. I want you to do well. But these people coming in. Like they, they want this to be an enjoyable hobby, an enjoyable experience. Some people desperately need this medicine and it's not like an advanced political assassination project for them. So put that well, and I wonder if, if some of that comes from the old school of like, uh, maybe, maybe one person is a, I'm a big mushroom producer and and I can supply mushrooms to my whole festival community and all this stuff. And, and here's some new guy trying to learn how to grow. You don't want him taking your business. Right. You know, but, but I, the way, the way I look at the the genetic side of it is it's constantly evolving, you know? Exactly. So like, nobody's going to take my business from me. I'm going to make my business. Yeah. If, if, if I just stop, doing mycology then yeah you, you somebody took it or i just lost it or whatever but nice. as long as i'm still doing mycology i'm having a great time even if i didn't have spores to sell or anything like that i i've been doing this for 25 years i've only been like in the actual vending game for the last three right maybe four i i can't keep track of time i don't even know what year it is honestly well that's a uh, great lesson in and of itself you know what that might be part of the mushroom thing too is i've been growing mushrooms for 25 years and now i don't know what year it is uh, so, so take that to heart kids. <laughs> yes. But no, there's a lot to be said for, I mean, you waited that long. You, you, you absolutely knew what you were doing when you came, came in. So that's a good lesson too, which is, you know, care about your craft. Well, yeah, cause I was just doing it for myself. You know, right. I just, I wasn't in communication with anybody about it. I wasn't a big seller. I, right. I just love to grow mushrooms. And, and I played with different phenotypes and let them die and, and didn't save them and, and didn't care because there was always going to be new ones, you know? So it wasn't, it wasn't until I, I linked up with, with Jick and the TAT syndicate that I actually started stabilizing and naming things. Right. Yeah. And the rest is history. Before that, I just ate them. The, still the best thing to do with them. What it is. Still the best thing. Yeah. Except for, uh, uh, I'm kind of scared of the chocolate gumby. I don't know if you've seen that one uh, that I've been working on, but it's it's like oh, a weird, yeah. Oh, yeah. the hybrid, like it's like halfway between Enigma and Fruits. Like it's like Enigma with caps. It's it's mm -hmm. really, it's really weird. 
Uh, I did just dry out a couple pieces that I plan on eating, and I'm scared. Start small. Although I know you, you can, you probably don't have to start off too small. <laughs> my tolerance is low. Uh, after my my year of digestive surgeries, I, I didn't right. eat mushrooms for a whole year, so I'm just kind of now getting back into it. So I'm I'm small doses. I'm not eating seven to ten grams at a time anymore. Right. All right, man. Well, thank you so much. Um, I, I think transparency, and then and also really just like your more generous attitude. And uh, your focus on just your practice and your work, um, I think that's a great foundation to start uh, talking about uh, th this idea of ethics. And, and I'm hoping that as we keep doing this, we're going to get better at talking about it and better at talking about some of these dicey situations. And I honestly hope um, I got a few people in mind. I I'm hoping maybe we can even like... Uh, heal the divide and in, in a couple, uh, you know, historic, uh, divides and that would um, be nice. You know, yeah, like, I, I feel like cool. people should all get along and, and let bygones be gone. Yeah. And just like the mushroom genetics are constantly evolving. We're evolving as people we at should. the same time. You know, I'm not the same yeah. guy that I was 10 minutes ago. I'm pretty close, yeah. pretty close, but hopefully subtle, a little bit better. Subtle difference. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Uh, always, always great to talk to you. Um, the, the audience loves uh, uh, getting a chance to get to know you a little bit more each time. So I really appreciate that. Don't forget, guys, uh, wombatgenetics.net. Um, keep, keep, keep Dave in his daily grind. Yeah, you got it. Um, yeah, the, the, the site is still under construction. It's got a really short menu. I mean, people know my, my spore list is pretty ridiculous. Uh, but trying to load that whole thing onto the site at once is yeah, not a good a, idea. It's, it's a process. So, well, and I, I looked at, that was one of the things I saw on other sites is like the more pages you have to go through to find the genetics, the more likely you're just not, and you're just going to buy something off the first page. Yeah. So I'm trying to keep it on one page and I'm just going to rotate things in and out. So there'll I be constantly new idea. products. Uh, and I think that'll be fun. And I want to get some t-shirts and other stuff on there too, once I'm yeah. geared up and ready for it. You got the graphics for it. It'll be fun. Yeah. Cool, man. All right. Love well, you, thanks everybody. again. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right, guys. Um, I I do historically go along with Dave. It happens. There's just some people I go along with. Um, okay. So next up, uh, final segment of the evening. Uh, doing not a bad job of roughly keeping on time. Um, so... Uh, I met not too long ago a guy who I think I think we met because he was watching a podcast and making some thoughtful comments and questions and I was like oh, this guy's interesting he you know he's asking some pretty sophisticated questions I, I want to talk to this guy more and so I started talking to him on Facebook come to find out he got a PhD in mycology studying advanced uh, taxonomical considerations utilizing ITS molecular barcoding super fancy science which the the geek in me uh responds to so anyway uh we've had him on a couple times and i'm hoping that in the new year uh this new segment it's not always going to be uh the 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 ed show but but we're going to start um definitely going to frequently see him on here and hopefully use his knowledge and expertise to uh, help everybody kind of sink their teeth into some stuff that I think for a long time people just go, Ugh, I don't know, that seems way over my head, I can't do this. Um, and uh, he and I think a lot more people can. So uh, this segment is going to be called Deep Science. I tried, I didn't have enough free time. I was going for like a weird science uh, um, aesthetic, but, but we ended up with some weird UFO looking mushrooms, which... That's fine. Uh, anyway, so I'm bringing on Ed Grand. He also, speaking of, you know, everybody's doing Patreon. Everybody's getting a website. This is great just because the we are now entering this, you know, the, the wave is starting to swell, right? The, the interest is growing rapidly and uh, people need swabs and, and genetics. So um, he right now, he's... <laughs> Just said, man, I'm just swabbing everything. I got to do something with these swabs. So he is on sporeswabs.com. Uh, he's under Dr. Ed Spore Shop. Um, 
Let's bring him on. What's up, brother? <laughs> Hello. All the way from Bangkok, Thailand. Yeah. Mean streets. Oh, yeah. So, Ed, if you guys saw earlier, one, uh, he had just the most ghetto headset of all time. Yeah. And, uh, it's V1. Oh, yeah. He, he had, uh, Ed was wearing some socks. So, uh, it looks like you got a better headset. I, I, can, I can get rid of the socks now. Although, maybe I should, you know, mic up here for protection. I don't yeah, know, you know. It is Bangkok, you know. So. Yes. I feel like what it was that like the TLC or something. One of those girls used to wear like a condom on her eye or something. Oh, oh we're old. We're old, man. We're old. Yeah, all that weird stuff. People do back then. Um, well, so it's almost eleven o'clock here, so that means it's almost eleven a.m. there, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, yep. so you're just starting your day. We're just finishing our day. Um, so. Ed and I had originally made some plans to walk through a fungal identification paper uh, utilizing DNA barcoding and whatnot, and at a certain point we said, you know what, let's just slowly ease ourselves into this. Um, so if anybody has um, topics, um, I know uh, in the last couple months, uh, Ed's YouTube channel's grown, uh, I have heard countless people tell me, oh my god, thank you so much for showing me Ed Grant's YouTube channel, um, I'm learning a lot about fungal microscopy, I'm learning, you know, just, he's got a very, uh, a different attitude, it's very chill, it's very laid back, it's like, let's, you know, you can do this, let me just show you a couple tricks, um, so that, that's working out well, he's getting a chance to interface with uh, a lot of people on my Discord, who are more interested in uh, microscopy practices and uh, and they're they're nerding out talking about barcoding and all that kind of stuff. So it's been cool to see this happen. And uh, for those of you who don't know, um, hey Michael, before we go, there, there's yeah. people talking about some noise in the background, but I don't have a flow hood on and I don't know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, so that headset was just kind of throwing a little ambient noise. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know what it would be because I, it, it's the same as. Yeah, it's definitely your feed because when I when I mute mine, it's not doing it. We'll it have could to look be my, into it. It might I be just, my internet. I saw it. I saw it glitching. Could be. Yeah. Well, it's okay. We'll we'll get look I at all know. these spoiled content people. You guys, I know. Um, a little bit of ambient noise. We'll be okay. Um, I don't know what's going on. Sorry, guys. We'll we'll figure it out for next time. Um, yeah. When earlier when when you were on, I assumed that you had a flow hood on or something, and that when you came on, it was just no, gone. no. It's exactly the same as it was. It's, it's probably not that. Is that any better? All right, we lost that. Okay, don't worry about it. We'll we'll, we'll get it figured out. Um. So yeah, um, so I'll tell you guys just off the bat, um, I'm interested and Ed's uh, willing to help. I'm, I'm gonna start learning you know, some, some fungal barcoding and we got some, some project ideas and, and whatnot, but would love to hear in uh, the comments section if anybody has uh, areas of interest, we, you know, throw them out there, and, and we can kind of we can present those uh, to the to the viewers here. But so um, Ed has been talking to me uh, as I pick his brain about you know uh, DNA sequencing and why you would do it, what would you benefit from it. Um, you know, he started uh, one of the I think the second podcast he was on. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, identifying mushrooms to genus, um, which is just the one level above the species, um, using macroscopic features. So meaning you can just, you know, look at the thing and figure out, uh, you know, what genus it's in based on mor morphology and, and uh, 
structure and stuff like that. Um, and then he said, so, you know, once you get into DNA barcoding, that genome is huge, and you got to know where you're, you're trying to look, and you got to know what you're trying to do with, with, with the, the genetic information. So, um, do you maybe want to just very broad stroke talk about um, what you did uh, with your PhD and kind of the lens, the very sophisticated lens that that gave you as far as your understanding of uh, fungal DNA? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. Um, uh, basically, I spent the first two years not knowing what the hell I was doing uh, because I was I was really trying to get into literature, and I know um, that the literature is pretty deep pretty quick. And uh, I believe, I've told you some stories about my advisor. Um, I asked him one day, like, what should I do? And he was like, I don't know, you fucking figure it out. <laughs> he was he was, a, he was a known asshole and um he didn't really give a shit what i did i was just another one of his hundreds of students <laughs> so so i looked at the little pleurotoid um genus uh that's now called crepidotis or maybe another one it's in the strophariaceae which is related to our babies and well now it's the hymenogaster whatever so so you very quickly you start hearing these names and it's like oh my god what is this what is that what is that and it, it becomes very overwhelming so I feel like my job uh, and my pain and suffering that I've been through is has been, hopefully I can filter out some of that pain and suffering and disseminate it to the general public because I don't really feel like you need to go through the bullshit that I did to get a, a three letters after your name. <laughs> and now, so to be fair, to... To be fair, I mean, dude, you just threw I'm not bitter so many or Latin names. You you had I, you dropped me like you know you were on a crutch rocket and I was driving you up. So yeah, I get exactly. it. But at the end of the day, you and I were talking the other day about how if you and I were at a bar talking about mushrooms, <laughs> the average person wouldn't even know what the hell we were saying. You were like you know F A E and and R H yeah. and, and all that. So like everybody uh, already has this tacit knowledge that would make other people feel stupid so like just because there's another layer to it and another level you know look if you yeah. love mushrooms feel free to engage more deeply that's kind of my ultimate hope yeah for, exactly for what we're doing on this podcast is just to get See, if my girlfriend listened to everything i said she'd be like <laughs> a fucking ass she'd be like paul and like alan and dave all rolled into one because I can't even, like we were talking about, or you were talking about with Dave, and, and there is no possible way that one human, even if you're like a 200 level, you can't keep all this stuff in your head. You have to like crowdsource and disseminate this. So like we were talking about, I would love for people to chit chat about little things that they pull out of some obscure Chinese paper that's been translated from shiitake production in 1970. Uh, you know, just pull out this random crap that like nobody's ever going to find. Uh, and they find that stuff because, I don't know, maybe they put in the right search terms or their cookies and their cash or the right, you know, the right sites that they visited that day. <laughs> and, and so, like, yeah, I love it. And like you had said, um, and I think it's worth repeating, in the, the academic mycology, the formal mycology scientific community, um, the stuff that a lot of us grow was kind of poo-pooed or shunned because it could get them in trouble, mm. right? Only more yeah. recently is, is there like a little more easing up of that, maybe exactly. more literature surrounding uh, psychedelic mushrooms. Mm. But I mean, that was a hands-off topic, right? So For sure, man. So like even me to. bringing up the family of the Strophariaceae, what it used to be called, like that was a no-no. And if you went to a conference with three or 400 other people, which you know I have to do to present and stuff, like, you just didn't talk about it. Like, you only talked about that in the hotel room at, like, 2 a.m. with the people you had been at the bar earlier and got, like, six hours to get to know them before you even mentioned the genus name. Like, <laughs> like it was just like, no, no. Except for in Utah. Everybody, everybody in Utah was down to, you know, every, well, you know, everything. Yeah, that's... Uh, that prohibition, like, breeds, like, kind of resentment and, like, uh, rebelliousness. They're like, woo, let's go. Yes. Whose room are we going to next? <laughs> I feel like we have some stories here. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those Mormons so, know how to get down, man. So that's, I mean, but that's important, right? Like, we are, we grow a species, uh, a lot of us grow a species that has been systematically ignored pretty much for, for mul a multiplicity of, you know, professional reasons. So there's a huge window of opportunity, and I mean, at the end of the day, they're all basidio carps. So if somebody figured something out about, you know, uh, another uh, another group of mushrooms, it, it, there might be some carryover. Oh hell yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. Oh, sorry. So keep going about um, about how you came to come up with your thesis topic, and then sort of break down what that really, right, like everybody who gets a PhD, they basically have this one little area that they've become an expert in, and so yeah. I think it would be good for people who continue to interact with you um, on the Discord or on your YouTube channel, and then through what we're doing here, I think the first step is for people to understand kind of where you sit with your expertise, and kind of then that nebulous ball of research that you could probably uh, talk about yeah so that nebulous ball is what I referred to in academia species concepts mm -hmm. so we've mentioned this before um, and a lot of it revolves around what most most people are familiar with is the biological species concept uh, if things can mate and they can produce viable offspring ie fertile spores uh, which we do all the time you know um, that, that occurs, Ernst Mayer, I think 1956 or something, um, he defined the biological species as essentially that, I kind of paraphrasing, but. Uh, so that's what my advisors did and my colleagues did. What They were working with Enochis, you know, Flamulina volutipes, if that's what it's still called. Uh, <laughs> they call it a golden, golden needle mushroom here. Uh, and he was also working with Pleurotus uh, oyster mushrooms. So they had already published quite extensively and we used essentially the morphology. Look, what like it's kind of, I'm sure you'll share the link to that paper. Um, they kind of go through it in there in more detail. Um, essentially you've got morphology, which is what it looks like, uh, microscopically and macroscopically. That's kind of the old way. And then, and then you've got the biology, which involves mating studies essentially, uh, and seeing if things will produce viable offspring, which is a lot more time consuming. Uh, and then you also have now DNA. So um, DNA is obviously, you know, everybody knows what DNA is, but I kind of feel I'm a little bit hesitant, hesitate to say this, but people don't really know what DNA is. They know the three letter acronym, mm -hmm. but like we'll see later. If I start talking about like adenosine and guanine and cysteine and thymine, people are gonna get real lost real quick. So ACGTs. And then when I start talking about introns and exons and coding regions and non-coding regions and copy number and mitochondrial DNA and ribosomal DNA and nuclear DNA and like people, I don't want to lose people right. because I don't, I don't want to be, as we've talked many times, I don't want to come off as pretentious. The only advantage I have here is that I spent a lot of hours of my life time. doing, yep. yes, one particular thing for four years, all I did was think about the genus Lentinus. And now all I think about is the genus Psilocybe. <laughs> and Paniola is something eh, once in a while. Deconia and a few others. But mostly Psilocybe. <laughs> like I told you, I had to hush my girlfriend the other day because I'm like, honey, honey, I'm thinking about mushrooms. <laughs> like I gave her that. I like talked to the hand. We were in the taxi and it was like really, really awkward because I just literally was like, honey, honey. I and I was just like. using that excuse. No, no, no. Hold on. I'm she knows. About she normal. Uh, she might slap me next time, but we were in a taxi, so she had to be like fairly, you know, nice. There was a camera. Yeah, yeah, um, she can't be beating me. So like yeah, she I mean, does. I don't the uh, guanine, and I know ACGT and and all that, but yeah. you know, I don't know the chemistry. I know your undergrad was in chemistry, so all that's probably super easy. For yeah, you. But, exactly. But at the end of the day, it's... most of us just know that there are these molecules that spin around because they're mm. you know, maybe they know that there there's a charge to them or not who knows um, but hopefully I do we, can, we can start <laughs> yeah we can start presenting um, 
both some resources of some simple videos. Like we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We can source um, some good like foundational videos to watch and then we can apply all this basic knowledge to the stuff that you talk to me about, which is a little more sophisticated understanding about how we could, as citizen scientists, start doing some more work around, um, you know, some barcoding at home, which is what I hope to be getting into, and I'm going to surely be, you know, sharing my journey on this, uh, on the channel, whether it's on the podcast or, or separate content, um, and, you know, the, the ultimate citizen scientist uh, uh, for, for our group, uh, Alan Rockefeller, has been doing this for years, and so hopefully we can keep growing and building upon that momentum um, and just, you know, do more, contribute more. At the end of the day, that's really why I'm doing all the stuff I'm doing, is I love this community and the way I work is if I love something, I have to be more a part of it. I have to give back. I have to contribute. And so uh, meeting you and all the exciting conversations I've had with you has definitely got me like, we're going to do some shit this year. Yes. Maybe it'll be into next year, but we're going to do some stuff. And dude, it's going to be like for the rest of our lives, I think. Yeah. And, and we're going to get, <laughs> we're going to have an army of people. Yeah. We're going to do some fun stuff. So strap in, guys. Anybody that, that's ready to, to geek out with us and um, um, learn this, we're going to be here for you. And, and that's it, dude. There, like, there are people out there that I, I, I don't generally consider myself very smart, to be honest. Okay. There are people out there that are fucking brilliant. Like, they may be, like, I think part of my goal, knowing the ins and outs of, like, the way some of these papers work and how the references work, etc., is to try to guide people, maybe, because we have more of a specific purpose. We want to know about cubes, right? That's kind of kind of our advantage is because we have all of this people power, manpower, woman power, and, and, and we can focus it on one particular thing. So instead of having four people working in a lab on, uh, oh, I don't know, like lentitis or how to make a you know mushroom taller so you can sell more of it. Like, I mean, like a chem, t uh, chem sorry, I'm speaking Thai, uh, uh, oyster mushroom or whatever. <laughs> um, like, we can just focus on, like, particular phenotypes. Like, I put a, a post up about the phenotypes and maybe... You can have like the wavy cap phenotype and the wrinkled uh, smexy gill phenotype and like the the black stem phenotype group and like that's kind of cool but I know like Dave was saying that's hard to organize and you don't want to put anybody on this partic particular task or anything like it's supposed to be fun. That's the other thing. People got to fucking lighten up a little bit like it's got to be fun, right? Uh, I, mean, yeah, like, I mean that has been a thing tonight what so we're far, doing. for sure is, is have fun and you know, I don't know uh, where you were when I was talking to Wumbo, but he seemed a little disappointed that he hadn't figured everything out. And I'm just like, look, dude, yeah, you're, you're combing me. through research and you're trying to t take the takeaways, the conclusions from real scientific research and apply them in into our realm. You're already doing something not a lot of people are doing. So fucking good for you. That's fantastic. We need more of that. And I, I hope to use this segment to encourage more of that behavior. And, uh, exactly, dude. I've got, like, notes. i got to be careful my notes. But I've got, like, three. I'm, like, one of those post-it note people. <laughs> like, I've, I've, got, I've got three pads going now just from this podcast. And that's what the thing, like, Wumbo was talking about, the old Mice, the Elliot Boba Balls, like mm -hmm. that. I, I, that's like it made me think about three or four other things, and it's yeah, like, see, that's uh, the, like, that's oh, what okay. This is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that, this is also why I'm very excited about the format change, and it'll, it'll continue to evolve over the year. But um, after doing the female podcast, I saw, like, oh, there's something special that happens when there's more people on. So I'm, we're also mm. going to do some roundtables where, you know, hey, tonight we're going to talk about grain for 30 minutes with five different people who all are notoriously in love with a certain grain, and we're just going <laughs> to let them banter and see. Rice, rice, rice. See, right. Dude, I tried to get the patty rice. I cannot get it. I, I, 
I got three guys who are trying to run, are friends that I, you know, sort of know. They're running millet now here. The millet here is such bad quality. People need to remember, like the popcorn discussion, getting things that are scraped off the floor of some feed lot in, in Iowa or whatever, and you're trying, they're meant for cattle and chickens. Like, so there's no way you can get them clean. Like, millet is not only, yeah, a large surface area for inoculation points of trick and other things <laughs> that hide in there. Yeah, and then people don't PC it long enough because it gets mushy and blah, blah, blah. It's like, goes on and on, right? Yeah, so, um, so, so everybody, uh, definitely looking for some feedback, um, uh, in the comments, uh, as you, uh, continue to think about this stuff. Um, but we're definitely going to start, um, I had been talking to Ed, I said, hey, you know, I read some of these, these journal articles and I can understand like 80% of them. Sometimes I'm lucky I can understand 90% of them, but there's always a part where I go, I don't know what the hell that is. I'm going to have to spend four hours looking into that just so I can actually understand this paragraph and, and maybe what the conclusion is. And then it was like, oh, hey, well, you know, in, in this, in what we're doing, I probably know what, we're, what you're talking about. And so a couple times he was like, oh, this is this. And, oh, okay, great, that makes sense. So our my thought was maybe we take a couple really great first step uh, pieces of literature and, and just go through them. So, for example, we're not going to get into it too much here tonight. Hold on, let me let me adjust all of this. There we go. Okay, so Ed had found uh, this article, and I, if I don't have it linked, I'll, I'll get it linked by tomorrow. Um, this is from the Journal of Natural Products. Uh, articles called "Fungal Identification Using Molecular Tools: A Primer for the Natural Products Research Community," and uh, basically walks through understanding uh, a big consortium that occurred and basically a uh, consensus around how to identify mushrooms to species level using DNA barcoding. And, and it, it pretty clearly walks through truly the process that, that this, this journal, you know, they're, they're trying to elevate natural products industry and so they, they know that everybody's interested in mushrooms right now. So let's make sure that all these people, some people very well funded, are, are looking to create new natural product, uh, products. And how do we uh, make sure that they're, like, this is a thing Ed would say all the time, um, you know, you got to know what it is. What is it? Let's at least know that. So anyway, we're going to start with this uh, article. Um, we, we'll start uh, next week on it. But, but basically walk through um, each section, uh, go into uh, more uh, depth and understanding so that anybody watching this series for the next couple episodes can go, I understand this paper, I understand the ideas behind it, and if I was so interested, um, I would know how to take the next steps and try to identify mushrooms at the species level using DNA barcoding. Very similar to, um, if you've watched an Alan Rockefeller presentation on it, um, this is what Alan's been doing for a while. So we'll be walking through this uh, in the coming episodes and, and then uh, continue on. and. Maybe somebody uh, finds a really compelling, you know, they read a paper that says if you use blue lights, it makes your mushrooms grow bigger. So we can look at that paper and, and start walking through some of that stuff. So this section is going to be very dependent and influenced by the, the people uh, who love it and, and, and want to uh, engage with it. So uh, just kind of the heads up there. All right, I think I'd spend taking notes here. Yeah, I was trying to. Uh, somebody just said if I turn down my mic and you turn yours up, it might help. So uh, is that any better? It's better. We, yeah, we'll look into it later about what. Yeah, it, so it's like a signal-to-noise ratio. It sounds like the gain's up too high. 
So yeah. the first thing I would is I would get the, the How about mic this? closer to your mouth and then turn your gain down. Oh, okay. Does that work any better? It said yeah, automatically adjust mic volume. Ooh, I would no. undo that because I think you... Yeah, have, okay, uh, there we go. I'll set it back to normal. Yeah. And oh, then okay, as so long as you have echo cancellation off and stereo off. And yeah, off. all that stuff's off. Well, we'll get it. We'll figure all that out. Um, but yeah, so uh, very exciting. Um, I mean, it really is... Uh, let, this is why I can't stop talking about the context that you're giving, which is... There are very few PhD mycologists in the world who love cubes, grow cubes, want to talk about cubes, want to help cube growers understand more complex science. Um, and so I, I think this will be a lot of fun and very exciting. Yeah, for sure. Like I said, I can get as nerdy as, as we want. Um, I just don't want to lose. I don't want to lose people um, right. because I, I, I noticed... Um, as soon as we started talking and, and oftentimes when I post things people look like they will say in the first comment is swabs my, my first comment from a lot of people is you lost me so I don't really know how to like go about those comments yeah. like if I lost you can you help me redirect you <laughs> because like I said I've, I've got a quite extensive like chemical background too so when I say like inositol or, you know, erythritol, or th know. Yeah. those are like words I know, like that's like common vernacular for me. So if you don't know what a, like a ketone is or P2P, like I was saying, the essential oil guy was talking about yesterday, talking about the, you know, MDMA synthesis, uh, maybe I should say, but uh, like he didn't know what P2P or P2MP, what, like he didn't know these like, you know, reductive amination and things like this. I'm like, dude, you don't know what you're talking about. Right. Um, but so if I do lose people, please, um, redirect me before yeah, so, I get to, I mean, just so you guys know, this guy, um, he, if he wants to lose you, he can, but he's also yeah. very easily simplified concepts for me mm. where I struggle to understand them. And he said, well, you know, it's really just like this. And then I'm like, oh my God, that's it. It totally clicked. So, um. That's yeah, right. so it, we'll figure it out. We'll we'll get there. Maybe we really do have to start extremely um, basic. Um, I do know, like, I think I told you about that guy on YouTube, Everyman Bio, who hopefully I can get on here at some point in time. Um, he uh, he did a video that went pretty in depth into DNA and its molecular structure and how it behaves and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it was pretty heady. And then I watched, uh, because I just bought a few things, I watched a mini PCR product video. It was like a two minute video on what DNA is. And I was like, this is great. This, I, I, uh, my core takeaway knowledge was greater watching that two minute simple, very simplified video than watching something a little more dense. So yeah, maybe we will have to really walk through it and, and, and build slow. But I still like, and I'd like some feedback from everybody. Like, do you like the idea of walking through a paper? Like, literally, during the segment, we, we you know, let you guys know this is the paper we're working. You know, read it, be ready with questions, and then we're going to kind of trudge through it and, and make sure everybody's on the same page and understand what's going on. Yes, you got, and can, can I make one other request, you guys? If you think that this sounds like a lecture or a classroom, you either gotta accept it, or help change that, or right. just move on. I, I'm sorry, this animosity to learning things, like I literally have people oh, tell yeah. me they don't like to learn. And I'm just like, okay, I, I just, I can stop talking to you now then. Because yeah, so, if you don't like to learn, I don't know what to do with you. Right, well, and that's, so this <laughs> is also gonna be the great thing about the segments, is now I can pretty easily on every one show where the segments are so if somebody just as cool growing cubes i'm also totally cool with that person um i still love that person i still want to help that person grow cubes um this is definitely for the people who 
okay, I've grown cubes, I want to do more. Or, I mean, I really like mycology. I started foraging, and now, you know, I want to buy that book. I want to be able to, uh-huh. uh, you know, like my buddy Kyle Kanan from uh, Southern Ohio here, he just went out to Los Angeles, hung out with Alan Rockefeller. He just had a post tonight where he was like, yeah, I got, you know, I got 16 sequences coming back. I'm going to, you know, put them up on GenBake soon. You know, he's excited that that is probably exactly the kind of people that, that we yeah. want uh, engage with. Exactly. Yeah. Like, if, like I put a, a warning on the top of one of my Facebook posts, like this is going to get nerdy. And I still, I had to delete some of the comments of like, oh, you lost me. It's like, dude, I warned you at the top. Like, click on. <laughs> like, like, I don't really care about, you know, um, thermodynamics or whatever of, like, a coffee mug. I, I don't really, I'm going to click on to the next topic. Like, don't waste your time reading this if you're not into fungal breeding and genetics. Like, there's better stuff, you know, go read a comic book or whatever and people now do. Now, you were also <laughs> saying that you, on a regular basis in my Discord, are frequently impressed with the yeah. intelligence of people. They just, like oh, you said... Yeah. You know, you spent four years nonstop every day, every waking moment of your life consumed with these topics. And so. But I was like drunk half the time, too. So. So maybe like two like years. To drink, get a PhD in my college. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. My colleges love to drink. They're like all a bunch of drunks. Yes. Well. And fern people and plant people and, and well, everybody isn't. <laughs> Everyone's a drunk, Ed. <laughs> Humans like to drink. Just... Oh, I just made wine. I was making, during Dave's section, I was making like eight liters of wine. Even though I don't drink anymore, I give it to my friends. We could do a whole section on that, too. We'll get, cheap, we'll get into wine. The, we'll get into Ed's hooch tech in a, in a couple of Yeah. Exactly. Cool, man. Well, so, so anyway, this is the show for tonight. Uh, deep science, it is definitely going to get deep. It's going to get nerdier. Um, and Ed is asking, and I kind of agree, uh, it, it's really going to be dependent the, uh, on the feedback that we get. Otherwise, we're going to have a way we're going to do it, and if nobody says this doesn't work, then <laughs> we're not going to know. We're just going to just be dudes talking. So <laughs> please provide the feedback. It's, it's really going to help. Um, the rumors are start flying. Course, now man. everybody the just rumors. wants your wine tech now. I know, that's what I thought. I'll post it on the Discord later. It's like okay. a half a page. It's dead Go easy. Go to the Discord. You guys will get the, the wine tech. Which, by the way, um, I guess I should have said this in the beginning. Um, uh, man, I kind of pittered out a little bit at the end. I got super sick uh, at the end of my giveaway, which I did extend an extra six days. Uh, it was a really great experience. I had a lot of... Uh, a lot of very generous people within the Discord and, and vendors that I've become friends with contribute to that. And it was just super awesome seeing uh, the Discord be being able to give away uh, so much stuff. Um, so uh, thank you for that. I, I hope it spread some uh, good cheer during the holidays. And now we're in the new year. Now we're back to the grind. We're, we're on New Year's resolutions. We're going to learn more. Uh, in a year from now, everybody's going to come back on the podcast and be like, damn, this is helping me. Uh, or I won't be doing it because it doesn't help anybody. But, but I'm, I'm thinking it's going to keep helping people. Um, so keep tuning in, and we're going to have a good time. Anyway, next week, uh, I don't completely have all the segments figured out yet because, I, like I said, I'm a little, little delayed from being sick. But we're going to talk about... Um, we're going to talk to one of my favorite Canadians, Mushman9000. Uh, I like to think of him as the canopy master. This guy is a really special dude, super unique, um, uh, extremely talented mycologist and filmmaker, and just a special guy. I cannot wait to have him on. Um, going to have a lot of new Mushman9000 fans after next week. And uh, Ed's going to be back. We're going to get actually into the paper um and uh i think that'll be a great um that'll be a great litmus test here for for how that goes um and a couple other surprises we'll you know you'll you'll find out a little bit closer next week anyway 
Thanks, Ed, for uh, sticking around. Uh, I feel like, uh, you know, it's like the end of the day for you, but it's not. Your day's just getting going. Yeah, I'm going to go make some iceberg mono tubs. <laughs> cool, man. All right, yeah. dude. Well, thanks again, and uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Okay, man. All right, Have take a good care. One. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry I've been off for three weeks. Man, dude, this holiday season just... <laughs> covid and flu and strep throat i literally have strep throat right now um so i appreciate you guys for uh hang hanging and uh putting up more for with some rescheduling and whatnot and uh give me a couple weeks here and i'll be back cruising altitude uh doing lots of fun exciting stuff for you guys anyway thank you so much next week mushman 9000 it is gonna be I'm telling you, you guys got to tune in. It is going to be a historic night. Uh, thank you and see you next week.